This video is brought to you by friend of the channel Squarespace. Stick around to learn more about how their intuitive website creation tools help people turn their hobbies into careers and dreams into reality. All right, there we go. done. You'd be sync. surprised how long it takes some people <laughs> to get that. Some yeah. <laughs> some guests, it's a real journey to get it, man. I tell you that, like it takes time. You clap on five or I clap? <laughs> well, I... Uh, when we do it, I clap your hands on five. Backlaw has Backlaw uses a beep because he's such a contrarian. He refuses. He really? Yeah, he, he uses a beep instead of a clap. He's, he's too good to clap. Fucking um, Anyway. Anyway. Here we Shall we? Because we usually have like a cold open, right? But I don't really have any. Well, I think that was the cold open. Oh, what? We're shitting on Bacala because he's not <laughs> it clapping? Was shitting on Bacala <laughs> and Nakey Jakey smashing the clap sink in one take, right? Nailed that's, it. that's rare. Just totally nailing it. Double kill. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Friends Per Second podcast. Uh, you might notice that we are. We're missing one East Coast based Jake, but we found another one. Uh, so joining Ralph and I this week, we've got Nakey Jakey himself. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here and co-hosting with us this week. Thank you for having me. It is a divine pleasure that I Ooh, would not. Shit. Wait, hang on. The collapsing <laughs> and like compliments. He's divine pleasure. Wow. Dude, no one's other, ever called us a divine your pleasure, other man. Are we even allowed to got... say that? Do we need to beep that shit out? Like that sounds just too much. Dude, that other Jake can fucking hit the road and chop liver, man. <laughs> um man, it's so amazing to have you yeah. for real. Like honestly, watch your shit for years. Mm -hmm. Um, massive fan, you know, like you're Thank just you. one of the like the top s tier creators on this mm -hmm. platform i think you know and i think a lot of people would agree with that it's um, really sweet yeah Thank truly you. just love all your stuff and just love watching you as well because like you have so many other interests outside of just talking smack about video games you've got this whole other thing going on mm -hmm. and i'm so jealous of that like imagine having other talents and interests outside of video games it must be nice you know <laughs> that's, imagine that's, it. that's so admirable you know <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> but yeah but truly when we reached out um you really so stoked that you said yes so thanks so much for making the time i really, really do appreciate it wow. hey thank like for real thank you for having me i mm -hmm. i am i recognize lucy from so many hours and years spent on GameSpot, and i also like pretty regularly not even just saying this to you know get brownie points but not watching every skill up video but definitely the uh weekly i don't even know what you exactly call this them week, but like th that has games. that's become my like news source for anything gaming and so because i used to browse like our games a lot or look mm -hmm. on different sites but i feel like that would just lead to me reading a bunch of other shit and a lot of really yeah. awful opinions and stuff so it's like <laughs> You like just get I, my awful. Now you get my awful opinion. Yeah, Let's see, you just Filter down to one him. awful opinion. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's it's awesome to be on here. I really appreciate it. It's yeah, yeah. Well, we're it's coming. Crazy we'll, life. It's a crazy world we live in. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we kind of wanted to talk about mm -hmm. that crazy life of yours because mm -hmm. I mean, you got a lot of shit going on, right? So we know, obviously, and most people who are watching here would be watching you for the gaming stuff that you do, and we're definitely going to talk mm -hmm. about that. But you got like a bunch of other like irons in the fire. So like I think the biggest one that I'm aware of at least is your music. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously you've released multiple tracks and even an album. Mm -hmm. Is it just mm -hmm. one album or two that you've done now? Just one. Just the one rom-com. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, talk to us about about that. Like, because uh, again, a lot of people here listening probably wouldn't know that you're a musician. You've done all that stuff. So just tell us. Yeah. Well, and honestly, there's a part of that that like, it means a lot whenever, uh, I mean, it means a lot when anyone pays any sort of attention. I mean, you guys know you make stuff on the internet. Like you're just, mm. a, you can appreciate that like a hundred people see your video, let alone like a hundred thousand or whatever. Mm. So the fact that anyone ever hears any sort of music, but I think the, the times when people don't really connect the dots or the few times people have been like, oh, I really love your music. But then I found out you do videos. It's like, no, that's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. nicest thing you could say that it had this natural <laughs> life of its own because I... Yeah. I mean, I have been uh, like specifically a drummer in like jazz band and stuff. Like I've been a musician long before I was ever a YouTuber and I was like learning production and doing all this stuff like years before I ever even learned how to open uh, 
totally not pirated version of Adobe Premiere. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> not not at all. Illegal. Especially not not now. Creative Cloud. Not I now. Got my membership. Absolutely not We're now. Good. At this point but about career. Not, not ever. <laughs> not not at not at any point. Um but uh yeah no it's it's been really I'm really grateful that I think there's a lot of situations where or a lot of like alternate realities where I did the YouTube thing and I had the gaming stuff and then when I put that first bit of music out there that it was like dookie ass no one liked it no one connected with it but fortunately there seems to be a considerable overlap of people that like it's obviously not the same as like all the gaming stuff but the fact that there's any audience that is not only interested but has been consistently interested and then that has kind of taken on its own thing it's it means a lot because like i think in my mind i still think of myself as like a drummer before anything else which is really it's so weird yeah no, no it's so that's it's like so, that's yeah right yeah i mean it's weird how your brain does that almost like a kid but it's like you know there's a fucking like drew good and gave me that little figure on a ball there's like subscriber plaques like for by all intents and purposes it's like okay i am a youtuber i have been one for like eight years but for whatever reason in my brain i'm like still just kind of fucking around how do you balance like because i mean for ralph and i it's it's all gaming all the time where does the music part of it come in and the gaming stop and vice versa i mean for the most part they're all just kind of mixed together Mm -hmm. like I try to just work on stuff in some capacity every day. I mean, obviously one will override the other that like, I think I do really well with deadlines to actually get me to like wrap things up. So usually it'll be like, okay, I am working on kind of everything, but I know I need to get this one thing done by the end of the month. So I'm fully working on this. Um, So yeah, I don't know. They're both like pretty constant, but I think especially after I finished rom-com that album, I was like, okay, I am like wiped out by this whole process. Like, cause I did everything myself and I was like, mm-hmm. like by my choice, I'm not like complaining. I was the one that was like, I want to do it all by myself. Um, but I took a pretty long break from making anything, but I mean, not the case right now, fortunate mm-hmm. to say. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess there's not really a simple answer other than just like, I am just kind of juggling both all the time. And I, I try to set structured time of like okay i'm gonna go to the rehearsal space play some stuff do this but it's like and i'm sure you guys can relate that i'll try to block out time like i'm gonna write a video now and i'm gonna do this now but then it's like 2 a.m and i'm like oh but what about this thing and then i'm writing all night and then the next day i sleep in all day because i was up all night and then i don't do it so it's yeah yeah Uh, so you're so you're working so you're making music right now mm -hmm. oh yeah Mm -hmm. cool okay and is there like a is that is that like a process that you just like it's done when it's done and you're like nah man i'm gonna be done in nine months i'm gonna have an album out like well it's kind of both because it's yeah. it's uh like i said i i if it's a classic thing like if i didn't have any sort of deadline i could keep tweaking on stuff and working on it forever that i think i'm finally starting to learn whether it's with music or videos that there's actually like a lot of beauty and good in being like okay i ran out of time and that's just it and i did the best i could instead of that being like a stressful thing i think that that's Mm -hmm. like um i think it's the whole like perfection is the enemy of done Mm. i think i've I've heard that but uh but you know with music stuff i mean i'm i'm like i can't i've learned my lessons in the past of giving a date and then completely missing it so it's like (laughs) i'm 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 not near saying any particular date but there are like plenty of things that are in the works that i'm really really excited about that like so, i i don't even want to say any like tentative things yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like no, it'll it, it is it is like both are happening though like music stuff video stuff like there, there's yeah things are cooking that's cool yeah and there's other stuff that you're going as well because in your mm-hmm. latest video you revealed ball creative creative in ball. A chat, like, <laughs> <laughs> is it called creative ball he's like no ralph it's ball creative i'm like that's a much better yeah. name uh so yeah tell us about what that is man what's the deal with that well it basically just started that i was like okay i want to i don't i haven't done a lot of merch just in all of doing youtube and i really wanted to make stuff i did some merch for like rom-com i did like a t-shirt and a sweatshirt and they were like really good quality and really limited and i was like okay i really like that um friends and family really seem to like that and just the idea of like making clothes that it's like it's merch but it's also just kind of its own thing and it actually is hopefully nice um even if you don't know what the fuck 
Red Dead is or like, you know, um, but then it kind of just, so it started as like an idea for merch, which it still is, but then it kind of just became this thing of like, well, I also make music and I also am working on music with others. That's a, that's the thing that I feel very okay saying is that like first time, first album, it was very much just me, all me. It's like, I am trying to be very collaborative with this second one. Mm -hmm. But along with that, I'm also like working on producing some music for like a friend that I think is really talented and all this. And so, and then the other big thing that it's like, I mentioned in the video, although briefly intentionally, because I didn't want to like make a big thing is like, I know I'm not going to do YouTube forever. And I know that it is like my life path, life's goal to get into game development with my brothers. And so it's also kind of putting the seeds in for that of like, hey, this is just the sort of brand, the creative umbrella for just anything creative that I am working on or I that I worked on with others or that I just support. And so while also just being like clothing merch that is affiliated yeah. with mm -hmm. any of that. So it's, yeah, it's kind of just my my creative ball that I'll just yeah. do whatever with. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so like, I, yeah, game dev. And that's so interesting. Like what, what draws you to game dev? Cause I mean, I think, I think a lot of people think, oh, if you talk about video games, it must mean you want to make a video game. Mm -hmm. And I think I kind of maybe started out like that a while ago when I started mm -hmm. out this career, cause I kind of wanted to get into game dev, but couldn't. So then I had to do this, you know, cause there were like no <laughs> jobs in Australia. Right. There's like, there's no industry here. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but then as I went along, I realized that I'm not creative. <laughs> I'm not good at coming up with new ideas. Like I'm good at like figuring out what doesn't work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not good at coming up with the solutions for what does work. And so I'm interested to hear like your journey about that, like in your relationship to game making versus games criticism and how you see that personally. Yeah, I think I, I went through a whole like, I think I feel like when I was younger, I especially had a a more naive view of game development of like you don't fully know just how much work goes into it and how much you crunch don't know shit at the yeah. start and how yeah. shittily yeah. people are paid and just yeah, the fucking yeah. political Hours. bullshit of it of yeah. just like you know especially like AAA stuff but even like indie games of like seeing way more documentaries by like no clip and other great channels that like kind of show what it's really like mm. and so I feel like that it simultaneously like scares me but i also find it like really inspiring but i think it's just the sort of thing where i mean the whole reason why i started making videos or games that should bang was because i think i was spending like too much time playing video games and just i don't know probably like i only kind of worked part-time at the time like i just had a lot of time on my hands and i felt like no games mm -hmm. were really like hitting like they mm -hmm. used to but anytime i started thinking about other ideas or like you know that first video of metal gear solid 5 and gta 5 and just getting so frustrated with gta and that actually being the eventual reason that i made the rockstars game design video because between that and red dead 2 i was just like okay i'm so fucking tired of these missions like i'm going <laughs> insane i think sure. it's a lot of those feelings and also just talking about stuff with my brother who's a really talented programmer both of them are and like i think it's it's just something that i know i want to do and i want to like attempt before i die mm -hmm. not to sound super dramatic but it just sure, sure. it's something that i have such a a love and like curiosity about and it's i think the fact that like that's the driving thing and not like i want to make a mobile game that's gonna have a bunch of transactions <laughs> yeah, yeah. and make a bunch of money like yeah, i yeah, fully yeah, yeah. And I think making a lot of the music stuff taught a lot of hard lessons too of that like not everyone is going to fuck with it. You can't predict how it's going to be received, but like you just have to do it because you know you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how I feel about game development. It's like I've spent so much time studying it and talking about it and learning about both sides of it that I think it's it's simultaneously like really inspiring but also terrifying because like mm. you're saying it's it's very easy well, it's not even easy to criticize something because we all know there's a bunch of YouTube reviewers. I'm not going to name any names, but like sure. not all games reviews are created equal. You'll have one fucking <laughs> incel being like, they fucking blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, <laughs> someone who actually gives a shit and recognizes that like human beings suffered to make this thing. And they're not sure. just like, um, so I, I don't know. That was, it's all just kind of rambly, but that it, I, I think the fact that there is such a, 
curiosity and such like a mm. inspired feeling, which is the same thing I felt when I started making videos of like, oh, I wonder if I can do that. And you start learning Premiere or like started making music back in the day. Of like, oh, I wonder if I can learn how sampling works and all this stuff mm -hmm. that it it feels like a natural evolution of that, of like, yeah, I know that that is something I want to fully like dip my toes into. But sure. the reason why, you know, I'm not giving any sort of timeline or any sort of expectation or anything is that it's like, that shit takes so long. And I yeah. have friends in game yeah. development that even when they have so much help and it's so like, I'm talking like that is I'm already juggling like videos and music like there's totally. no there's no way there's any sort of thing coming out anytime soon but I think yeah. again just planting the seeds for that of like this is the sort of company that could become any sort of thing along with just being like a creative umbrella mm -hmm. just for putting mm -hmm. out shit by me or my friends but anyways yeah cool. I just love I just love video games and I think I just for a while the older I get the more I kind of get um, I almost feel like jaded or I get tired of playing them and I end up thinking about like what I would change or this or that and I'm like oh maybe I should spend my time actually like doing that and like mm -hmm. unreal instead of playing you know Red Dead or Elden Ring or something for the billionth time and expecting so. something different you know <laughs> yeah, 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 what kind yeah. of what kind of role would you want to do on a game would you want to write like creative direct like what's the the vision for your role on it I well I think I I would uh I think I have such a curiosity for all aspects. Mm -hmm. Like I know that I, you know, wouldn't want to be super in the trenches, like on the programming side, but at the same time, like the brief bit of programming or even just like, I know it is definitely not the same thing, but like, I don't know if you guys remember RPG Maker mm -hmm. back in the day. Oh yeah. Cool. I spent so many hours in junior high, like RPG Maker XP of like getting into the sort of code underneath that and even just scripting the most simple things I got such a satisfaction from, but, mm -hmm. um, or even doing like sound design stuff or music or all that stuff that I already have experience with, or just like, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it, it would likely be more of like creative director of like, okay, mm -hmm. I kind of have this idea. I have this thing, but I think, I think I would only want to do it if I was certain that I was very open to like a collaborative process because I think that that it would be really stupid to go into it being like, okay, I have the exact idea of what this <laughs> yeah, is going to be because yeah. every single like story and documentary you watch about any game is like, oh yeah, this happened by accident because Greg from accounting thought that like portals would be cool <laughs> if they were this color and then, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. here it is and it's so. God bless Greg from yeah. accounting. He's a For seasonal real. MVP. That guy's, I wanted to come back to something beautiful. you said a bit earlier. You're like, um, you say you don't, you know, you don't want to do YouTube forever. That's that's interesting. What, um, like, what, what's the reason for that? Like, what, what leads you to that conclusion? Well, maybe it, it might not even be like a certainty. I think it's not so much that I don't want to do YouTube forever. I think it's that I want to do other things that would inevitably take time away from mm, doing sure. YouTube. Like as long as I'm thinking of ideas and things that make me excited about making videos, which seem to still be coming, you know, even if it's <laughs> every three months or some shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, no, I'm definitely not like, okay, this year I'm done. I'm out of ideas, whatever. But I think it's just a realistic expectation of knowing that like, x music thing or x eventual game dev thing or whatever it's like the the types of videos that i make and how i make them right now are so time consuming that i just know mm. that like at least in the form it is now that's not going to be something that's going to be until i'm you know retired like mm. but also i don't know maybe it could be maybe it'll be a thing that it'll it'll be like you know a year or two gap between a video which yeah. <laughs> it's already kind of happened but then you know <laughs> something happens something comes out like you know a gta 6 or something and i just have so many things to say about it and i'm like sure. god damn it they pulled me back in it's like, you know. <laughs> so i don't know it's all it's all very uncertain but i yeah. i think it's just uh it's something that knowing how I am and how overwhelmed I can get and that it's really hard for me to juggle a bunch of things mm -hmm. at once. It's just like, yeah, I know at some point YouTube is going to have to take a back seat to some other stuff. Mm -hmm. For yeah. sure. Well, I mean, you're cooking right now. Like yeah. you just released your uh, Red Dead video, fantastic video. Yeah. Thank and you. I mean, you kind of prompted, it kind of explained it in the video itself, but for anyone that hasn't watched it, like what was it that prompted you to do another video about Red Dead after the first one? Well, it just, I, I love that first video. And I think that it was such a, 
it came from such like a pure like i have to talk about this like i felt like i was annoying my roommates i was annoying my friends like it was it wasn't a thing like oh i need a video for this month it was like a, okay i don't know how i'm going to say this but i have to say it. and i was terrified like i thought the title was going to piss way more people off mm -hmm. i thought that the it was not going to be super well received but it it was a uh, really satisfying and really uh, I was very thankful of the response that people were, even people that liked the game were really open to the ideas of criticizing X, Y, Z thing. And even though in the Definitely. video I prefaced, like, I think Arthur's one of the greatest protagonists. I think the soundtrack's yeah. amazing. I think all this, I think that as the years went on, I started thinking about those things just as much as the issues I had and specifically the writing and specifically all these small, beautiful little touches and how mm. immersive it can be in these other ways. Mm. And, I think particularly playing it on PC and it just kind of eating away at me. I was finally like, okay, I want to play this again. And then as I started fucking around with the mods and stuff, that was the point where I knew like, all right, I got to, I got to talk about this more. Like I'm having a lot of more feelings about this game. I want to mm. talk about it. So it, yeah, I think, I think it, it stemmed from like a wanting to, again, even though I already prefaced, I think wanting to give it more space to be like, Yes, it is flawed, but also it's really beautiful in all these mm. different ways. And I, I think that also just comes from a place of not always wanting to just be like a, like a critic. Like I, yeah. I love, I love watching things that criticize something, especially like, you know, people's breakdowns of like Elden Ring or something. That's like, man, that might be the best game I've ever played, but holy shit, it is so flawed. Especially playing yeah. it again right now, it's like I love it, but like so imbalanced it's so many of the Jump. dungeons are dookie like you know but just <laughs> that i think that there's and on my own channel too it's so much easier to write jokes and to talk about something when you're dunking on it that i think mm -hmm. that sometimes it can be good to also be like hey this is also really sweet and there's yeah, a lot of things yeah. to really appreciate about it but i that's not always the most entertaining but i think that i thought about those aspects and i've like loved Rockstar's games for so many years that I'm like, mm. yeah, this feels right. I want to I want to talk about this. Yeah. I think it's like it's quite natural I think to face some of those really massive gaming experiences and have a response to it in the immediate that then transforms into something different later on, you know? Mm -hmm. Cuz I mean, I remember similar quite similar to you with Red Dead, right? When I played Red Dead, I'm like this is easily the best written video game I've ever played in my entire life hands down that was immediately apparent to me and like the scenery and the vibes whatever but at the same time because i was going through a process of reviewing this video oh, game yeah. you're like you're look, viewing it through the lens of like okay that's all great but what about this thing that doesn't work and that thing that doesn't work and so a lot of your thought space is taken up trying to analyze the components right and then put out a thesis about what you think works and doesn't work right and then mm -hmm. you set it down and then you walk away and you're like okay cool whatever and then three years later, you're like, well, what do I remember about Red Dead? Do I remember the clunky shooting? I mean, sort of, but do I give a fuck? Not really. Yeah. Like, I remember just being absolutely floored by certain moments in that game when the soundtrack when the soundtrack kicks in. Or oh my god! When yeah. like when like you know when that that moment where they're walking up to the house like the, the oh, whole gang immediate like, that's just like wallpaper. You just see shit. that. Yeah, it's just like you just like you just chills when you get that mm -hmm. shit right. So, and that's a few years on if you were going to like make a video on red dead now yeah you could absolutely nitpick its little components but you're probably more likely to do what, exactly what you did which is like mm -hmm. just talk about the fact that hey holy shit this is a pretty fucking remarkable piece of software you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah um which is nuts and i think i had something similar with like sekiro for example where i'm like deep in sekiro i'm like god damn this fucking game and like this bullshit boss and whatever and like you're angry at it you you're just like i'm so shit i keep dying i'm so bad at this whatever but then, and you finish it and you have like a lot of frustration in that moment. But then two years, three years later, you look back on it and you're like, well, that probably was the best melee combat in history. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's probably, uh, if it's not, it's up there, you mm. know? Um, so I think it's like an interesting journey to to do that. Would you, do you think you'd go back and do that for any of the other, like stuff that you've covered in the past? Like any other videos, anything else you've played that really like rings out like that? I mean, the thing is that it's like, I've thought about it with, I mean, the only other really, like, it's like we were talking about before of the three, like, game design videos. Like, I made one about From Software that was, it was more yeah. positive and more just about their journey, whatever, but mm -hmm. that of, like, Last of Us and Starfield that 
I've like, I think naturally after making this video too, of not wanting to follow some formula of like, oh no, I'm going to go back to this other video that had a bunch of views, but like just toying around with the idea of like, well, do I have like a drive to want to revisit The Last of Us part two, like for example? And it's like, no, I yeah, really don't. <laughs> I, I, I spent, well, and same with Red Dead that everything you're saying is so true that like it being our job while I'm playing Red Dead, obviously I'm like taking notes and thinking yeah, about yeah. all these different mm. things. But at the same time, I was simultaneously just that kid that's obsessed with Rockstar that was like fully getting immersed. And a lot of those criticisms came actually from that side of that person just wanting to enjoy this game and playing it for like 13 hours a day, but running into all these things that are like, mm. like uh, pattern recognition of like, wait, why is Rockstar doing this, but they're not doing this and this. Mm. And, th and it's just, it's uh, yeah, I, I think, of any video I ever made, I think I spent the most time on The Last of Us one because right. not even just because it's like 50 minutes long and I think it technically might be my longest video, but because of the writing, because yeah. I spent months writing and restructuring it and then changing things and thinking about it. And I think for the longest time, I didn't even know exactly how to put into words how I felt about it, mm -hmm. but because I spent so much time thinking about it and talking about it with my brother and my friends and probably even my mom and just like all these different concepts. I think I spent so much time analyzing that game from so many different perspectives that like, I'm good. Like that is one where maybe there's totally. some things I would go back and change, but it's like, I kind of put it all out there. Like I, I spent the time and every time I've seen like, you know, there's all the YouTube shorts of like, see what you want about this game. It has the best combat, whatever. And it's like, no, totally. <laughs> like the, the movement the animations, like Naughty Dog mm -hmm. is amazing. Like no one is disagreeing with that. But at the same time, every time I see even those snippets of like satisfying combat, I remember all the other parts of that game and I'm just like, absolutely. Oh, I don't want to play that anytime totally. soon. Mm -hmm. Like, and like, uh, I mean, and I want to say as well, it was really very cathartic to watch your video on the matter because yeah, the whole discourse of the last of us was the worst. It was the worst of all the discourses. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think, cause I obviously did not like the last yeah. of us. And it kind of got bound up in this... There was generally this perspective of, like, if you didn't like The Last of Us, it was because, like, Abby was buff or whatever. It's like, I don't give a fuck mm -hmm. that Abby was buff. You know what I mean? I just care about, like, the fact that this, I do not believe, is a well-written video game. And I do not believe that its gameplay is really popping off and, like, connecting with the message that it's trying to convey. And I think some of the themes that it was trying to prop up were quite simple and whatever else. But I think a lot of that criticism didn't bubble up to the surface during that. Also because at that time... Like Sony, I, you couldn't really advance that argument in the initial reviews, by the way. Well, you weren't Sony allowed to talk these, about Abby. You weren't allowed to talk about, in yeah. that initial batch of reviews, you weren't allowed to talk about the fact that Abby is a playable character, which is wild. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I so, do not envy you guys. If, like, I assume you both played it before release in yeah. preparation yeah, but I, for I don't, it. I don't review things. I The last game I reviewed gave a score review to was persona five back in 2017 <laughs> yes and what did you give it nine out of ten um and then when we re-reviewed it was for... very mad no no, no actually <laughs> Where's, what's the missing one lucy huh because huh? i thought the fi i thought the ending boss gauntlet was absolute bullshit and there was other there was other stuff in there that like just kind of stopped it from being a 10 but then when royal came out michael hyam re-reviewed it and gave it a 10 out of 10 i was like yes royal is the better game like i agree with this yeah but ultimately like to what you've both been saying, it is a different experience when you're playing a game just to play it versus playing a game to be critical about it and having to then deal with the pressure of having to articulate your thoughts so you're not misconstrued yeah. in any way. Not that it matters in it's online. Get misconstrued anyway. Yeah. Uh, never happens, but no, I remember <laughs> Last of Us being. 2020 Fair in general enough. with Last of Us and Cyberpunk <laughs> review <laughs> shit. It was, it, was uh, it was a nightmare. So I, I don't envy you, Ralph. In well, this. yeah, that was that was that was a tough one. So I mean, and that that speaking to that, I mean, that actually just reminded me of like different people have commented or said, understandably, of like, where, where's the cyberpunk video? Like, where's this? Blah blah blah. And I think it's the thing with that is it was its shortcomings were so blatant, and there were so many videos about it yep. that I was like, I have nothing of importance or interest totally to add agree. to this conversation. It was like. I've seen the glitch compilations. I've seen this thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's one where maybe years later, it actually would be interesting to revisit. Absolutely. Um, but, but like, it, it's the same with Starfield for me. Yeah. Cause I mean, I was like, where's your Starfield review? I'm like, dude, 
There's nothing left to say about Starfield. It's no. all been said. There is nothing else to say, you know. And I actually yeah. just re re rewatched your Starfield review recently, and I said I've only played like a couple of hours of it, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't have any desire to play any more of it. But also because I just I consumed a lot of Starfield discourse. Like, what else is there to say about this video game? I'm I'm very certain that if I was to put fifty hours into it, I would come to the same conclusions as most of the people that I, you know, that I follow and respect and listen to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, um, totally. I mean, and that, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I'm, I'm also just, guys, I'm in my thirties now. If I'm not, in, <laughs> if I'm not enjoying something, sure. I'm yeah. not going to stick around with it. There's so much else going on that I could be oh my God, spending yeah. my time on and enjoying more. And one day, Ralph, I will play Outer Wilds. I will do that for you. But I, you I still need to better. play that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on now, please. <laughs> See, please. The, the like, everything you just described, and I've already spent so much time thinking about it and making that video, but like that feeling you just described that I feel like I feel way more often now is like that perfectly encapsulates starfield for me that it's Mm. like the shooting sucks you could be playing this other shooter the rpg (laughs) aspect sucks you could be playing this rpg and then like baldur's gate like come on like you really gonna but there's just even the yeah i mean i already made a whole video about it but it's just like even the stuff that usually bethesda can say like we can do and no one else is doing like it just was not there for me at all and it was i think like the other videos that I wasn't even initially planning on making like another outdated game design video, but as mm-hmm. I was playing it, it was that same feeling of like, oh fuck, clearly I have a lot to say about this. And yeah. I like, when you can't stop thinking about it and talking about it with your friends, usually that's a pretty good sign of like, okay, there's there's something here to be made or talked about or whatever, but. Yeah, I, I guess like connected with that, you know, it's a bit of a convoluted question, but like you've got three videos x is out outdated game design right it's it's uh last of us with naughty dog it's starfield from bethesda and it's um red dead from um rockstar that's rockstar's like the biggest independent game maker realistically <laughs> if we're talking about revenue right and bethesda is kind of i would say like the crown jewel within B- uh, microsoft's holdings right now except for i don't know they obviously just acquired activision blizzard but that's a line ball call uh and then naughty dog is obviously the jewel in sony's crown do you think that that those like three videos that body of work like constitutes a broader commentary on the nature of triple a video games and their game design and the overall momentum of the triple a industry or is it like nah that's just three games from three studios overall triple a is in great shape how do you feel about that Mm. I feel like even if it wasn't intended on my part fully of it being any sort of like bigger message, I think that just in the the material itself, I think there's a clear pattern and a clear thing that it's like, I know me, I know my interests, I am, you know, running a modded version of Max Payne 3 on a Steam Deck, like who the fuck is playing Max Payne 3 on a Steam Deck? Like I know the things that I like, but I think my personal opinions aside i feel like there have been a consistent amount of things in triple a space that mm. you know there's a venn diagram of like even those three videos of like yeah they all have their separate stuff but i'm sure there's some stuff that definitely overlaps and mm. specifically of like oh is that my mic yeah it's a little laugh <laughs> specifically like you know least of well not the least maybe most of like the treatment of the employees like Mm. i think that Mm. it's that i feel like that's a consistent factor with all three of those games is there's at least some reports of like crunch and i like i've had i don't think that i think i already said it in a video like i have a friend that worked on the last of us part two like Mm -hmm. i you know, I, I have several friends that worked on The Last of Us Part Two that, like, were in Naughty Dog. And it's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to talk about any of this stuff, but that it's like, I have seen behind the curtain a little bit. I'm not an yeah. expert by any stretch of the imagination, but, like, of everything I've talked about and everything I've seen, it's like, no, I think that there is, even though each game has its own issues and it's, you know, quote unquote, outdated, whatever the fuck, for any reason, I think there mm. is a consistent thing of, like, people are being worked to the bone 
and we are focusing on the wrong thing and just throwing so much money at these visuals that don't even really matter that much at the end of the day but i guess they do but they don't sure. and mm-hmm. push up and watch your character crawl through it you know a tight space because oh it's like just show me a fucking loading screen and let the guy go to sleep <laughs> that night like i don't give a shit final <laughs> fantasy 7 rebirth is so bad with that i didn't even play it i was talking to my brother about it there's so much shit like that where it's just oh, like yeah forced slow crawling and it's like who is this for so sure. no okay having opinions. said that i do feel final fantasy ever rebirth is pretty fucking amazing uh, oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's incredible it's, i watched it's, it's full of that bullshit for sure no that that isn't to say that like i haven't even played it but watching my brother play it and oh, he right, like, streamed okay. the ending and like we talked about it a bunch like sure I don't understand how they made that in the time that they made that. There's so much shit in that game, mm. and it's so polished for how much is in there. Yeah. It's like completely agree. And the soundtrack is oh yeah, unbelievable. What's well, a well a well oiled team, right? They'd all just done remake. Most of them stuck on to make rebirth, and it's like yeah. And I think that's like that's a theme, like counter to what you've said about like crunch. And look, maybe these some of these teams are crunching. I don't know. Like, for example, Nintendo, right? And when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom, everyone's like, how did you do this? And it's like, well, we just had the same group of people work on it for a really long time. And that's not to say, like, crunching hours. They're talking about, like, we kept this team of people employed year after year, honing their skills, and that's how you get a game like that, which is mm-hmm. remarkable. And then Larian said exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. They've said that repeatedly, in fact. They said, mm-hmm. and they realistically have been making this type of game for, like, 20 years now. And it's taken them 20 years to get this good. And it just, you know, it, the, it intersects to create this moment. Mm. But it wasn't just like it came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? That's what they that's what they built themselves to do over that span of time. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the same thing. You know, like you've Mass got Effect this consistent the team they stick thing. with. Like Ma- I think Mass Effect 2 was 18 months. And they were like, oh, okay. yeah, well, it was yeah, like the yeah, same okay, team. Right. But like then, and then straight into I wonder three. how much crunch that was there. Not just <laughs> firing remember... everyone the second the game's out. <laughs> yeah. Like that's yeah. Andromeda. But no, that's... I remember I, I th- talking to Mac Walters about it, and he was just like, "Yeah, it was a pretty nice dev on on yeah. last two. But he would I say think that as well. Like, like this, I think about this a lot right now with like all these layoffs going on. Yeah. And everyone's like, "Oh, I get comments in my comment section. Like, why do I? Why should I give a fuck about layoffs? I'm like, okay, well, first of all, like human stuff mm. aside, okay, whatever, okay." realistically there have been in excess of 20 to 25,000 people who have left the games industry mm-hmm. over the last like 15 months you don't think that's going to result in some like some some reduced quality in video games you don't think that's like some brain drain that's not going to affect the quality of the video game that you eventually get you know what i mean the institutional um, knowledge that's lost totally it, it's 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 huge like and i think people complain about x y and z like obviously there's so many things that are frustrating about the triple a games model Mm -hmm. but for me right now that's the thing that i'm like looking at the most and thinking well what is like what's the long tail repercussions of that because it just feels like these very experienced people are being pushed out and that's that Mm -hmm. and then we lose what Mm -hmm. they have forever and it's not like a lot of new people are joining the ranks by the way because everyone's seeing how hard this industry is to work in Mm -hmm. and how shitty the pay is and how bad the job security is it's like if you know how to like code are you going to go work for a bank and earn like 200k a year you know just doing a like nine to five desk job or are you going to go and work your ass off in game dev at a long shot thing probably earning 60k a year and then maybe you get made redundant after the game ships you know like mm-hmm. which one are you going to go with you know and so right i definitely think about that a lot i think it's like a, i think we'll be feeling the impacts of these two years for like for a long time mm. so yeah no i mean i i think stuff like that i mean again just my basic understanding like i don't I, at the end of the day i don't really know a whole lot about this but it's like i feel like a lot of those companies they kind of prey on the like yeah but you get to you're passionate about it right like oh, oh but you're yeah. making a game though you get to work mm-hmm. here with us you're it's the dream Naughty job dog. and it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's like yeah but you guys yeah well do you not I, find I, it weird that like i i find it especially weird when they call like I, I don't like the fact that naughty dog calls their employees dogs for example because that is that's that's pretty <laughs> do, do that i didn't yeah. even know that oh yeah that's kind of messed up it's like it, they call it, it the kennel the kennel <laughs> it like preys into that like <laughs> That's We're probably not paying you enough, but you're part of a family, <laughs> dog. 
And it's like, I just Yo, you got to watch Neil put his hair product in today, bro. You got to see it up close. <laughs> no, I got a haircut. It looks good. <laughs> to be fair, it always yeah, looks good. Yeah, it's great. He takes care of himself, he, man. He's he always takes had good really care good of himself. Hair. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah um, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, I want, hang on. So we, we talked a lot about things being outdated and everything. I'm interested to hear from you. Like, what has surprised you and has been truly innovative that you think uh, in the last few years? Hmm. Like game design wise could be even aesthetically like i mean on the hardware front definitely steam deck mm. just the fact that the form factor and everything means mm -hmm. and i've seen this sentiment from other people but i have such a weird commitment thing where like the act of turning on the ps5 and picking the game and doing all this or even sitting at my computer it's such like a ah but i could be working or mm -hmm. ah, i have to open steam and pick a game whatever like there is something to be said of just the fact that like you could turn it on and immediately resume whatever you were doing. Yeah, it's yeah. This, it, it fits the lifestyle that I feel like a lot of us have and our like attention spans that I think that it has made for like some meaningful experiences like revisiting games. Maybe I hadn't played otherwise or mm -hmm. like really getting into stuff like Slay the Spire or something like that, that I like didn't even know I was into a game like that. And I'm like, damn. So, I mean, that's one that in the past few years I feel like has had a hold on me, but um yeah i think of course i'm drawing a blank right now but i feel like there was something outside of FromSoft stuff yeah i mean mm. that's the thing is that i i think that experimenting more with mods and like fully realizing and playing around with the idea that like you can potentially change this thing that you've already experienced for the better or make it funny or whatever. I think that that's something I've paid a lot more attention to, but man, I don't know why I'm like blanking right now in games that I'm blanking on I've my own played. question. So it's okay. I'm just like, yeah. I think it's like, interestingly, like when you think about innovation, I don't know. I think a lot of it happens outside of the AAA space. A lot mm. of it is in that indie space. Like you look at Bellatro and mm. you're like, well, it's another deck builder. It's like, like yeah, it is. But... There's nothing else like Bellatro, man. Like you play for yeah. five minutes and you were fucking hooked, you know? I still haven't um, played it. I just watched Game uh, Maker's Toolkit on it. Uh, and I, yeah, so right, right, right. Yeah, no, so, I, I, I want to try it. It's... it's the inscription before that that kind of like mm. x factor obviously out of wilds well before that that again that was an indie title from from um from annapurna um yeah like a lot of that space but and as well i think a lot of the innovation actually happens in Fortnite, which yeah. is fucking crazy but it is like that kind Le of like those dude, lego Fortnite. i was mm -hmm. i was in that yeah that's a good game man mm -hmm. and obviously it's not like super innovative but like in aggregate, if you look at those platforms like Fortnite and Minecraft and Roblox, those like user generated content platforms, the way that they're able to create new experiences so quickly is genuinely fascinating. And it's such a blind spot for us in the way we talk about video games because mm -hmm. we just like, we're like, let's play Elden Ring again. Like for sure. Absolutely. Of course. But then we're not going to step into really like truly understand the epic games like unreal in Fortnite ecosystem and what that creates because if you start digging around you very quickly find some incredible shit you know yeah um, no I, I i think that 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 was a good reminder that i feel like a lot of the time i have been gaming in the past year i'll usually be playing with my nephew who's about to turn eight and it's like he has right. an ipad and now he has a switch because i gave him my switch mm -hmm. and so i think that just you talking about all that in Fortnite and you know stuff like minecraft is cross-platform like i would give up having a ps6 or like advancing hardware wise next generation if it just meant that if anything that's multiplayer is cross-platform like mm -hmm. it's so valuable and so convenient and the fact that we could play like minecraft or minecraft dungeons or lego fortnite or um I'm trying to remember another cross-platform game i mean really just a lot of minecraft warframe I think that <laughs> yeah we haven't been old friend your old but like he's getting there he'll get there <laughs> yeah no he will and uh I think that's actually something that in the past couple of years I feel like I've thought about a lot is how much hmm. cross platform is just so like not only convenient but that it 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 really does change the whole conversation of like mm. consoles and exclusives. I mean, it's the whole Xbox conversation, totally, right? Yeah. Bit. Like totally. the fucking fanboys being like, no, our exclusives. And then other people being like, no, this is good. And it's like, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all sorts of opinions on that. I don't, 
I don't understand what the fuck they've been doing over there. I don't know why they called it the Series SX. I think that's the Dude, worst brand uh, ever. It's like, such a miss, man. It's, it's such a miss. That's the tip of the iceberg, but every time they announce they're <laughs> yes. doing something else, I'm like, dude, I'm rooting for you, but like you guys are on your way out. Like, did you guys hear is... did you hear this week where they talk about like putting the Epic Game Store on the Xbox console? Did you hear this? No. Mm-mm. That's what Phil Spencer said last I week mean, or two weeks ago. Uh, Phil's always like, saying something, man. Phil's like, Phil's saying just, shit. I it's a it's yeah. I'm moving to PC. I'm a I'm a PC boy now. I plug, You're a PC I'm a boy PC now. boy now. No, I'm console I, console that's lady, two PC it's, boy. <laughs> it's plugged in to my TV. I the last time I turned on my PS5 was to play Final Fantasy, and before that, don't know. Ex- yeah, my, ex- my for Xbox. the seventeenth time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Xbox, but like, I don't even, know. Even I less. still, I just, I still feel like that matters though. Like, I still feel yeah. having a box that has some exclusives matters because that has a whole thing attached to it. Oh, it does. Totally. It does. First party publishing and and the prestige associated with that, the money that goes into yeah. it, the focus, like all of that. I think it really matters. And like, you know, I was just talking about this this week in my video, where I'm like, I mean, basically, I have a PlayStation. I have a Switch and I have and I have a Steam account, okay? I'm never not going to have one of those three things mm-hmm. unless those companies really fuck up or they, like, pivot in their strategy, mm-hmm. okay? Which maybe they will, but right now... Nintendo, for example, is not going to pivot. Yeah. They are going to keep doing exactly the same thing forever. God bless them, right? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, that is nice. And Microsoft doesn't fit into that picture at this point. And they did mm-hmm. back in the day, you know? Like, yeah. they really did in the 360 era, and they wanted to do that. They wanted to get back to that in the Xbox One era. And that set them up really well for this current generation. But they just it just didn't work. And now mm-hmm. it just feels like they're like, well, that didn't work. And now let's just go third party. And I just think that's such a bummer. I'm really disappointed with... It seems as though they're kind of like throwing in the towel a little bit rather mm-hmm. than trying to fight to be a place that you would always mm-hmm. want to have an Xbox sitting under your TV they don't they just they don't want that anymore and i think that's a real shame um, i think it's yeah, a loss really... for everyone I think yeah so. totally. i think totally. i think it's it's a loss for like the competition and for exclusives and it's just also for microsoft to sell not that that they're like running out of money but it's like man <laughs> xbox is just i feel like it keeps shooting itself in the dick mm. just every <laughs> step it's just like yeah, all right yeah. we're gonna call the console this okay uh the exclusives are on here but they're also on pc but now they're also gonna come to everything else uh let's just buy a bunch of companies and yeah. uh, these companies kind of <laughs> suck now anyways uh well, fucking that's, candy that's the crush thing. like it's not even it's not even the race to be a box under your tv now it is a race to be on its service it's a race to be on game pass and that's yeah, the selling yeah, yeah. point now and that's and the, like, the digital future that awaits us all yeah now. and this is the thing right i think it's really easy to go, well, really smart people make these decisions. They know what they're talking about. We're mm-hmm. dumb. Like really smart people know what they're doing, right? And that's probably true. But it's like, also sometimes you just feel like you know something really deep down, right? And I know really deep down that like we just, you just need a box that just plays really fucking good games. You can't play anywhere else. Like I just, I know that in my yeah. bones. Do you know what no. I mean? And yeah. I don't care what any spreadsheet or fucking digital mm. this and that. I just, I know that. You know what I mean? And like maybe in five years time, I look like a total dig. It's like, no, nah, Microsoft's a crushed Nintendo. They bought them out or some shit. Right. Fair like, enough. Like whatever. Phil said, it's his deal. It's his dream <laughs> or whatever. Oh yeah, to buy Nintendo. Buy Nintendo. Yeah. But I just like, just I just know it in my bones, man. That like you just that is well, the way yeah, this business works. That- it's that I know that exact feeling you're talking about. That I feel like you're young and you just always assume like, well, if so and so is at this position, they yeah, know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. If then you know if so and so does this, yeah. but it's like, I've gone to the bank and the person whose job was supposed to be not to fuck it up fucked something up. And so you, <laughs> yeah. at the older you get, the more you realize like everyone's just kind of trying their best. And so yeah, like yeah. sometimes like it really they really don't know best. They're really just yeah. trying and failing. Yeah. And I and a lot of people I'm, fail upwards too. Don't forget that. Yeah, and I, dude, I think after the the one, two of like the whole Xbox One stuff, and then now the Xbox Series stuff, I think that there's more than enough proof to be like, all right, I don't think it's exactly the the, uh, top brass that knows what they're doing for the best of, you know, the brand and the company. Like, I don't know, Phil seems like an okay guy. There's been cool stuff. Like, I have no feelings about Mm -hmm. that, but just of like, going from the 360 to now it's like it does not have the same feeling at all but i wish it did you know can i Mm, ask a really depressing question 
Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Do the kids interact with games the same way that we did? This is like, but this is another thing that I kind of feel in my bones where I'm like, they might not now, right? They mm-hmm. might not when they're like 15 or whatever and they're playing Roblox and Minecraft and whatever else and they're playing mobile games and whatever. But eventually at some point, they're going to become us. <laughs> like, they're going to be like, but I that's really the, like, need at what a age, good video game. What do you got At what age did you know we what I mean? become us? Like, because I was playing well, but games we were us with... from like, we were us from like That's eight. the thing. But do you think what? that like, they're going to change overnight? They're raised on, not to sound like my mom or anything, but it's like, you know, the way that <laughs> they grew up with the internet, the way that they're growing up with iPads, they are not... We grew up with desktop PCs and consoles, and that's where we got games from i mean i think using my nephew as like a case study he was like only playing games on like ipad but because Mm -hmm. i was around and i had my switch and my playstation Mm -hmm. whatever it was like exposing him to Mm -hmm. oh what's this cool looking game Mm -hmm. you know astrobot whatever on ps5 because he really liked that even when he was younger he could actually do some of it it was like i think as long as there are games that are attention grabbing and interesting Mm -hmm. on console people will learn how to do it like he learned Mm -hmm. how to use Mm -hmm. a controller because on an ipad all it is is simulating a controller anyway Mm -hmm. so having a physical one i think it only took him a brief amount of time to realize like oh actually this feels way better Mm -hmm. and so i Mm -hmm. think granted i was exposing him to all that and i still am and now he fully you know he has my switch and he's playing all sorts of stuff and we play like luigi's mansion which luigi's mansion 3 bangs that's like the perfect game to play with fantastic him. game fantastic it's really game. fun and it's like perfect difficulty for him but uh yeah. yeah i don't know i think the answer is like no because the internet is crazy and apps like roblox and stuff are crazy but mm-hmm. at the same time kind of like ralph's saying it's like i think yeah like it's I mean, still like, kind of the like same what, shit like are we reading different books than we were 100 years ago are we reading are we watching different movies than we were 50 years ago are we like we're watching i'm Dune sorry but go- part watching two. we are watching doing part and two repeatedly we're listening to that sh- chant, <laughs> <the> fucking- <laughs> all we share in the all we share in the friends per second podcast discord now is <laughs> Dune two minutes. Dune that's means- it the whole thing is just Dune two minutes <laughs> yeah. Dude, i love but it. like but for real like you know I think we there's there's some universal truth to this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Mobile games and and see battle passes and all the shit, like all the monetization, all the new things that go on top of it. Absolutely, of course, mm-hmm. right? But there's some core truths, which is like, is this game good? <laughs> mm-hmm. And if it is good, people will play it. And the number of people that finds, I'm sure, will grow or shrink or whatever mm-hmm. over time. But like that's true. Like that's a truth. You know what I mean? And I don't think that is going to be lost on the next generation or even the next generation or the generation after that. Mm-hmm. I really, I really think that. Yeah, I mean, so, as long as people like Nintendo are making games like Tears of the Kingdom on Switch, like something mm-hmm. like the Switch is going to be sold and bought by at least some amount of people mm. as long as they don't pull another like wii u situation <laughs> um so anything's possible with nintendo man yeah. but it's, for real. it's, like, it's the games know. it's like i think as the years have gone on it's like xbox just doesn't have the like ghost of tsushima or tears yeah, of the yeah. kingdom or a game that is like one of many that you'd be like oh i'm actually trying to check that out it's just like mm, acquiring sure. a bunch of stuff and trying to make yeah. another halo and i actually really like halo infinite in a lot of ways Me but too. i do not yep. like how they I dropped, I dropped off yeah like the actual yeah. gameplay is like some of my favorite shooter ever in the campaign while the map was like empty the fucking gunplay with the grapple and doing it in co-op once they added that is so fun like i again i'm like rooting for them like i want yeah, xbox same. to to be in their glory days but it's just so apparent that they're not <laughs> like yeah should uh should we pivot to some some lighthearted user questions i was gonna say we've got so many um yeah we do when we posted up that you were on it was just like oh you need to take a break i was gonna say can i run to the bathroom real quick go for it man we'll do it we'll do a cut now that's fine yeah cool all right well earlier this week we put out a call on twitter um because we said obviously we're gonna have naked jake in the podcast and if you have any questions and boy did people have questions so a lot of people also emailed them to contact friendsforsecond.com and uh tweeted um I forget what our Twitter account is. 
the is fps podcast at, is it at the fps podcast so find, just search france per second you'll find it um, <laughs> with it. Um, if you can find anything on twitter these days oh yeah God. it's like a shit show dude <laughs> tell me about it like what, what what's in your bio sorry can you repeat that what's in bio what's in bio oh what's in bio? have you seen that just like straight up posting clips to porn now Oh, oh yeah, I'm yeah. It's when everywhere, I, man. So I made it's... the what was nightmare fuel is having the ball creative account be so new. I got the oh. username on Instagram and Twitter months ago, mm-hmm. but because I had followed no one, I hadn't done anything. It was like it's like when you turn on a TV at an Airbnb and you see what YouTube recommends if it's not your <laughs> login, and it's like Mr. Beast and a bunch of other bullshit, and you're like, oh yeah, this exists. That's what it was like for Instagram and Twitter, and I was horrified, but it was also hilarious, dude. On Twitter, it straight up is just like you won't believe what happened in my video next. And it's like anyone have the Ice Spice leak, and it's like. I followed every account. But, oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. nice, good, 100%. good, good, good. Yeah. excellent. It's a shit show. It's so bad. Well, it we is. had we had some amazing questions come through, so I'm gonna get, get through some of them. So this one definitely didn't pick it because of the excellent username, which was Billy Bo Baggins, which I really enjoyed. <laughs> nice. Um, hi, FPS crew and Jakey. Question for you guys: Has there been a game or piece of media that you would like to cover but don't know how to approach it? I know Ralph said he hasn't done a review for Outer Wilds because of this exact scenario. P.S. Outer Wilds is incredible. Mm. Word. Mm. 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 Stu, can you bring in some um, some some Jeopardy thinking yeah. music while uh, you... while Jackie's doing on this one? I can quickly it... say that I don't want to ever yeah. go back to Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> oh, is it because you're too scared to address the Kingdom Hearts community directly? Because that's fair. No, that I'm too fair. I'm too afraid to play that game and realize that it might have actually been shit. Right. Oh, I was recently playing that with uh, my friend Eddie, Eddie and Tony. I don't know if you guys watch Burback or Eddie. Eddie, Burback yeah, sure, or, yeah. sure, of course. Um, because they grew up on Kingdom Hearts too. They loved it. I only ever played the first one. So we were before I left LA. We were having nights where we played that, and it was like they were very nostalgic for it. Yeah. And so they love it for that. But like playing the final mix and playing on critical mode to make the combat more fun, like it does kind of bang. You might like okay. it more than you're scared. Well, because like, it, it's it one of my fun. favorite games of all time. But I'm just so maybe maybe just uh, New Kingdom Hearts has just kind of diluted my love for it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Ugh, shit. I don't know. Because I'm trying to think of something that like I feel like I would want to talk about. But yeah, you can't figure out a way that you would want to cover mm-hmm. it or make it. Or yeah, maybe you just don't think there's enough there for it. Hmm. Uh. You know what? I have a notes app of like different ideas Ooh. and a lot of them go. definitely get left in the graveyard. Let me check real quick to see right. if there's anything. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Out of wilds. I'm, I'm just generally. I, yeah. I, even now I like, what do I say on this podcast about it? I can't Yeah. Just really don't have anything that I can just succinctly put out there. It's like my white whale. Maybe one day when I like have a spare six months free, I'll figure out some words around it. But yeah, mm. not anytime soon. I think, I think for me it's generally, and that's something that I I kind of wanted to start doing more on Jaquan the Jequel, the second channel of just like more casual conversation reviews and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've seen that. But I I think somewhere in between that and like an actual review, looking at my notes, it it definitely was a lot of stuff of just games I played last year mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. like. You know, something like Jedi Survivor, where it's like, I don't really think there's enough there that I would want to make a full video on that would be compelling, but I definitely have, like, thoughts and feelings about it, mm. but I just don't really have an exact avenue to talk about that. But, like, seeing that as an example, or, like, Hitman Freelancer, which I mm. love. I love the Freelancer mode. I think it's so... Just the Hitman games, I, I think, are just remarkable. But, uh, yeah, I guess just stuff like that, that there's not... Even between main channel and Jaquan, which I haven't really been doing anything on, I think there there's a lot of things where it's like clearly like you guys, I can talk about video games forever, but it's like it's not my channel isn't really the structure of doing like here is the review for blank. I mean it yeah. is, but it's disguised as this essay that's about yeah. other stuff. But yeah. Mm. All right. Well, this cool. is this is maybe my favorite user question we've ever received. This is from <laughs> at zeme.exe. If all your stuff got wiped from existence right now and you could only keep one piece of content to stay up forever, which one would it be? Album counts too, by the way. Mm. Ooh. Mm. I mean, <laughs> the, the first... 
the first thought is and it's it's not even because it is like the most viewed but i think that rockstar video i think that mm -hmm. just like the time i made it how like passionate i was about the things i was talking about and how much it seems that that has resonated with people and that i think i i took some feelings and some concepts that felt really complicated and that i didn't fully understand and then i feel like i presented them in a way that was digestible i feel like I feel like that video sums up so much of why I love video games and what I want out of them that I think the first initial thought was probably that one. And mm -hmm. I, but I don't know. It's a tough one. Fuck it, delete them all. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, good call. Good call. Well, no, that's what about you, Ralph? Would it, would it be yeah. would it be some of your your Destiny Two <sighs> builds and? <laughs> yeah 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 that's right my old uh division looter led the, the weekly vendor reset guides i used to do every saturday morning what was the one with um, the dog again which one the one where i shot the dog yeah. and the division community got mad yeah. yeah that's right that's right i remember that one <laughs> um yeah i mean yeah i think that's really tough as well i think my favorite piece of content that i've ever made is the car ride interview i did with cory barlog oh you know, that is really good which is just like yeah. a I don't think nice I've ever seen thing that. Great. oh yeah so the so the day that the god of war reviews came out cory barlog was in sydney and he like the so he was at sony's office and so all the reviews went up and he was watching all of them and then the sony someone at sony called me and he's like and they were like hey cory barlog's here he would like to meet you would you like to come and say hello i'm like are you fucking Damn. kidding me right now so I go over there and I'd actually met him once before, but very briefly um, in um, Norway for like a promo thing for God of War back in the day. He didn't remember me. At least I don't think he did. But um, we chatted and whatever. And then he mentioned to me, he's like, oh, I got to go see my friend George Miller now. Uh, <laughs> like the George Miller. And I'm like, you what know, the Happy fuck? Feet. Ever heard of him? <laughs> yeah, that's right. His, his seminal work, Happy Feet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, what's the deal? And he's like, well, he's a he's a mentor of mine, you know, from back in the day. And I'm going to go over there and deliver him a copy of, you know, God of War because, like, you know, he means so much to me, and I wanted to do this. And I'm like, I'm like, well, where is he? He's like at Fox Studios, which is like probably a 20 minute drive from where we were. I'm like, I'll fucking drive you. I've got my car here right now. So he's like, yeah, sweet. So we did a car ride. Actually, it was suggested by a guy who's who was there. He's like, you should drive him and film it, do a car ride interview. And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. So I like basically like put my camera up in the car and interviewed him, his reaction on the spot to his like his the reviews that he just got. And it was like, that's crazy. Just in it was incredible just to be with this man in that moment who had just accomplished this incredible thing with his huge, incredible team. Um, it was it was it was really nice. So that's mm -hmm. if I was to leave one video up, it would probably be that one. You know, because mm -hmm. that's that's sweet. How did you mount the camera? This is like the technical person yeah you know what it was question. literally a phone that i kind of just because i didn't have anything with me and so i literally just put the phone resting on like the gps oh, lcd screen nice, like it was just nice. put the phone in there and film and so the, the the video angle is so jank it's like you're looking up our noses yeah, kind yeah. of thing the whole time and <laughs> it's super ghetto but it was a really good video and um yeah what well, definitely one of my favorites so no that's yeah. special that's that's mm -hmm. awesome yeah, it's mm. nice when we get to... And I think that's one of the things that I appreciate about this podcast. Mm. The fact that we actually get the chance to speak to these people that make these games. You know, like mm -hmm. going to Ghost Story Games and chatting mm -hmm. with Ken Levine. It's like, you know, what the fuck, man? Yeah. He and his team made Bioshock and now he's making this thing and we get to talk to him about all that. And it's, it's fascinating, you know what I mean? And yeah. we get like, we literally have a conversation coming up after this with City Project Red. Yep. about what it's like mm, to nuts. build a new studio and like while making cyberpunk 2 and i don't know i feel very lucky to have those sorts of conversations um because yeah i mean i think our like my job as a critic and i mean all of us we all speak about games critically and we're commentators and whatever else but at the same time we do that because we like really love video games and mm -hmm. we're deeply appreciative of the people that make them and um and those people that make them are often like really fascinating to talk to so yeah yeah i love, I th I love that i show. think yeah. i think that's exactly something that as i've made more and more videos and specifically critical reviews i've wanted to really hammer on is that it's like mm. it's coming from a place of love people mm. go through so much shit to make this like i think it's we're talking about it earlier but it's so easy to just shit on something with no yeah, regard yeah. to the the human sure. aspect or anything but it's like making anything is hard making a video game seems insane like mm -hmm. 
being criticized in any way. It's like, but also at the same time, like you should criticize stuff. Like I, I hope that if and when, if I ever make a game, I hope some fucker online says ball creatives game design is outdated because it's like that you should like please do i'm gonna make that video and i'm gonna, gonna sit on an exercise ball while i'm doing it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what do I, it. it's gonna be very meta sit on your creative ball <laughs> <laughs> i think mine would be oh, you already took one with Corey. i did a series called audio logs which is basically notes on a scene but with game developers mm, that's probably sick. my favorite show that i've ever worked on the one that we did with Corey was the first one we ever shot and it was really good because he kind of came in and just went oh yeah by the way we weren't gonna have the blades of chaos in god of war 2018 until about six months and we were gonna cut them um and then he just came in and and tells that story um that one was amazing just like in terms of the fact where we'd done stuff and and we weren't sure if the format would work or if devs would get it and we shot it at gdc 2019 and then that week we had Corey come in. We had um, Jared Moldenhauer from MDHR to talk about Cuphead. We had someone cool. from Dead Cells. We had someone from we had Pete from uh, Blue Point to talk about Shadow of the Colossus. So it was like this incredible week of just yeah, that's nuts. Having I watch these devs talk about yeah, their yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. The last one we did was we did Final Fantasy six, uh, sixteen, but we also had um, we had Sam Lake in to talk about. You know, yeah. Alan Wake 2 and it's a really nice. fun series that I it's cool yeah and it's like that stuff doesn't like get uh, very often doesn't get a lot of views you well, know, like the chatting thing, with like, developers yeah chatting with developers and having the what's our hot ones conversation <laughs> yeah, is really yeah, difficult yeah. but uh, audio logs like when it hit it hit good like yeah. the yeah it's it's nice when that, yeah. when that works I love that kind of stuff I, I think that's why yeah channels like no clip it's i yeah again even if you know some videos don't do as well as others whatever i think that it's so important and it's the type of stuff where i think that the people that do connect with it it's really important like for Mm -hmm. people that are also making something or people that are just have an interest in it or whatever it's that it's it's yeah whether it's like video games or pottery or whatever i just think it's so interesting to hear how someone did something for sure so stuff like that that's really cool Mm -hmm. yeah well, as Ralph already teased up, uh, while we were in Boston to go see Judas, we did catch up with CD Projekt Red, uh, Gabe and Pavel, to talk about setting up a new studio. We tried to get some stuff out of them for Cyberpunk 2, and they were not. Um, I really hope Stu leaves in the part where we get yelled at. <laughs> Does he, uh, he probably cut that. Ah. Did, you, did you actually get yelled at? <laughs> no, because we were in like a WeWork or whatever, and we had like we had like maybe five minutes to go, and we were recording and uh and we hadn't packed down though so it was clear that it was going to take more than five yeah. minutes for us to get out of that room right and so this lady like kind of comes in with like a lot of attitude being like yeah. excuse me we've got this room booked and it's like all right all right well we're nearly finished just we're wrapping up and so then like we finish up the interview really quickly we pack down everything pull it out of the room we're like out of there in like fucking three minutes mm-hmm. you know what i mean and then we're hanging around for like another half an hour afterwards just chatting <laughs> with the guys and she doesn't even use the room it's like why did you come in there with that amount of attitude if you didn't need the fucking room right then just chill out lady you know this yeah, entire yeah, we so. work was maybe 10 percent occupied too I think she <laughs> have had any other room. Just, like seriously anyway uh but yeah so we'll go to the side punk interview after a brief word uh from this week's sponsor let's talk about breaking into the games coverage business a lot of people ask me how to join games media or become a youtuber etc truth is there are a lot of paths into this gig for me personally i like making videos so youtube works But what if you're all about the written word and want to write for a publication or maybe even start a publication of your own? Well, if that's the case, then you're going to want to set up your own website, ideally with Squarespace. Squarespace lets you create professional looking websites in minutes. They have a whole bunch of really customizable templates you can tweak to your own preference. And in no time at all, you can have space online where you can begin writing and publishing your own work. Maybe that site is kind of like a portfolio that an outlet might look at when you're applying for a gig. Or maybe you just go independent and do your own coverage your own way. If you're going to do that, then you're definitely going to need to worry about things like SEO. Otherwise, your work won't appear in search. Luckily, Squarespace provides helpful SEO tools for just that. You're also going to want to know how people find your website and what people are doing when they get to it. That's why Squarespace has detailed analytics tools allowing you to track all that stuff and more. 
Since 2003, Squarespace has been helping people turn their dreams into reality. So if there's a passion that you'd like to make a career, then check out Squarespace for free by visiting squarespace.com. And when you're ready to get serious, use offer code SKILLUP at checkout for 10% off your purchase of a domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. This week's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Now, Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to raise awareness and make sure that everyone is doing everything that they can to do cancer screening checks. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, you know, obviously, the older you get, the more important it gets It gets to check this stuff out. Uh, Manscaped are the specialists when it comes to taking care down there. And that's not just about it looking good, but also about it being healthy. And so that's why they've partnered with them. There are different ways that, that Manscaped are supporting. Obviously, it's through awareness with shout outs like this. Uh, but also, when you purchase a Manscaped product, you can actually make a donation to the Testicular Cancer Society during your purchase. But at the same time, you can also donate directly to uh, TCS. Uh, if you go to Manscaped's website, you'll see an entire section devoted to this stuff. They genuinely care about it. It makes sense because uh, down below the waist, that's like that's their area, right? So they need to, you know, they're they're all over that stuff. Ralph, this is not my area of expertise, but how does Manscaped help you take care of yourself down there? It's a very good question, Lucy. For a long time now, I've been using the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. It has dual LED spotlights, so you'll achieve better visibility, making every trim more precise and hassle-free. If you don't like mess, this thing is waterproof, so you can use it in the shower, which is great. Uh, you can bring this with you wherever you like. It actually just plugs in via USB and it charges and you can just take it with you if you're ever traveling, whatever else. It's very lightweight. It's very comfortable to use. It, the battery lasts a long time. It's just a really versatile, fantastic device that, yeah, as I said, allows you to keep it clean down there. Keep it tidy. Just, just keep it in check. You know what I mean? Very important. Um, and if you are of the variety of men who can grow beards, I am not of that variety, but there's a, pro there's a product for you too. It's called the Beard Hedger Pro Plus Handyman. Uh, it's basically a, you know, a trimmer for your beard. And were I someone that could grow a beard, I might be interested in that product. But unfortunately, I am not. But I actually do use their Handyman um, electric shaver. It's like, you oh. know, like, yeah, they actually do use that. I, tr I take that with me when I travel. And it actually is super convenient because rather than having to do a full shave, especially when I'm traveling like long haul flight or whatever, just like, bzzz, and then at least I don't look so grimy when I got off the plane. So yeah, that's uh, that's Manscaped stuff. Been using it for years. They really are the leader in below the waist grooming and also face grooming stuff as well. Um, and yeah, they also really care about you taking care of yourself. That is why they partner with the Testicular Cancer Society. That's why they're also donating $50,000 to the Testicular Cancer Society society you can help save lives and balls by going to manscape.com forward slash tcs and sharing their funny educational check yourself video and while you're at it grab 20 percent off plus free shipping with code friends because like a famous american philosopher once said take care of your chicken your balls and your mentals which what, what? <laughs> the british and the australian like did, what <laughs> did they say that is that something that a famous american it's Where's in Jake? the brief so i'm gonna assume that they said it okay that's manscaped.com forward slash tcs and you can use code friends for 20 percent off plus free shipping all right we're here in this very hot room <laughs> thank you boys for being here how, how are you i'm all right i'm all right it's just starting to get hot yeah we're just starting yeah we got time don't call attention to it because now we're all just gonna be sat here going <sighs> i'm melting yeah uh so <laughs> you guys are hot off of cyberpunk 2077 wow. phantom liberty mm. everything is going well how how is the feeling because last time we talked to you it was right before phantom liberty so now mm. that we're post phantom liberty how are you feeling how's the team feeling uh, good, for sure. Um, you know, we, we go into this, we do the, you know, we got ideas, plans, and, and kind of setting out to do the best we can. And you kind of hold your breath when you press the release button, because that's how it's done. It's just one button you press. And it all happens. <laughs> sure, I understand. And, uh, and afterwards, you know, you just kind of stay tuned. And, and we're really thrilled that everyone uh, kind of appreciated uh, what it was and excited about it. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I'm proud. I'm feeling proud, and it's just. Um, I I think we we mentioned it or talked about it a bit. It's just uh, when you think about like game development, you know, a lot of times the triple A's they take like five, six, seven years, twelve years, you know, depending which studio, right? Um, and you have so many people join, you know, throughout that time, and there's so many people that never really ship the game. They can work for like five, six years, you know, sometimes, and just yeah. never see and feel that success. And I remember like. It was heartbreaking to see, you know, with like so many kind of younger devs that joined us and they didn't have that feeling of success after 77, you know, so they didn't know how it tastes, you know, it's a different feeling. It just makes you like sustained and kind of motivated. And then there was this clear difference when like Phantom Liberty shipped in a studio, with like how everyone felt like. I remember it was like a release party that we had after Phantom Liberty in like Warsaw when like everyone was hugging and the energy was there. Yeah. It was just so warm and just so fucking nice. Tears. Mm -hmm. That's cold. You know what I mean? Like That's it was cold. just, and I, I felt like, because I experienced that in the past. I, I know how it is to ship a successful game in a way, you know, with Witcher 3 and expansions. But for that people that were there in the team, they they didn't experience it before, you know? They read about it in newspapers. <laughs> but it was more than just not experiencing it. To your point, there was a, there was a bit of trauma. Yeah, absolutely. And kind yeah. of the, the whole story arc, if you will, of um, kind of getting through that and mm. uh, beating that moment. And that party that we had, the internal one, um, yeah, it was a good moment. There's there's tears of relief and joy and and motivation. Yeah. yeah, and and so I mean, like we we've, we've talked we've talked a lot about Phantom Liberty in the past. Obviously, we all played it and loved it. Uh, there was obviously reviews and what have you. But looking back at it now, a few months on, why do you think it worked as well as it did? Like in terms of why did it hit in that way? What do you think mm. resonated most about that about that release? Wow, um, I think the kind of virtue of sticking with it, I think was was a factor. Um, because I mean, there's there's the the content and the features themselves, and there's also the kind of the story that goes with it, right? And so, as far as the story that goes with it, I think the the sticking to it and staying true to the kind of art form and the spirit of the potential of 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 what the the game could be, what the IP had to offer, I think that was a a part that contributed to it in the kind of the subtext. Um, when it comes down to the to the feature set, I think. You know, we, we stayed true to uh, strong characters with a story um, and then kind of touching on themes and points that kind of maybe expand uh, your point of view and your horizon, so to speak. So I think it spoke to a lot of people, the characters and the, and the situations. Mm. And then, of course, the feature set, we really wanted to focus on just uh, kind of having fun and uh, getting immersed into the world. And I think uh, focusing on that and not losing sight of that, because it's very easy to get bogged down and caught up in like over designing if you just stick to like hey what is the fantasy of this world let's have fun with that and i think that was a big part that that resonated as well uh, for me it was it was dogtown <clears throat> dogtown is like the sickest coolest yeah. environment cool. did you guys like learn something from that like well like what what came from dogtown yeah well i dogtown was uh was quite of um uh, a challenge for us in that we're like, okay, we got Night City, and now let's make a district that's essentially, you know, it's adjacent to, but it's not Night City, yeah. and still cyberpunk in this world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, it was it was challenging in trying to get that balance of sort of a war torn area, but also having that kind of cyberpunk neon, if you will, and striking that balance, as well as finding the the life in the in in the district. Is it? Um, you know, it's not Kabuki, so to speak. It's not, you know, uh, other areas of Night City, but it's its own. And so we, we, I remember at one point in time, we're like, we need to make this feel more like uh, Kurt uh, runs this, you know, like a military district. And we added the guard towers with spotlights. And we're like, oh, yeah, this is really, this is really mm -hmm. hitting it. And then the convoys and stuff like that and the different districts mm -hmm. of um, where, the kind of uh, Kurt's crew is uh, is patrolling versus the ones they're not, and kind of what the difference is of of how the rule of law is and the feeling, and then this one district where uh, Longshore stacks, where the tree is and the community is, and what's it like to have a community there that are trying to make their life outside of Night City for whatever reason they're, they they had to escape Night City, and we got a bunch of story behind that, but what's the life like there? And then with in, in kind of contrast to Kurt's militia 
and and you know we got them walking around in that area patrolling while people are just trying to live their life and const- and occasionally just giving someone a gut punch and things like that and so like harassing the crew so yeah i mean i i kind of i kind of started to ramble a bit but it was a iterative process to find that balance cool. to make it unique mm-hmm. and juarez uh you know the border el paso to juarez mexico uh east coast west or not east coast East and West Berlin, the wall, all of these things were like inspirations for how we approached it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, And uh, I will just drop one one additional thought, like uh, in connecting even like two last questions that you guys asked. The um, what was interesting is that um, when you ship a game like 77, one thing that really sticks to you is like everyone that I talked to in the studio was more senior was like they were like creatively angry. And what I mean by that, everyone was like, when you're being told by so many people that you're shit with everything you do and with everything like you want to show off yeah you really you have, have like this a fire name. you really are like okay, i'm gonna fucking show them <laughs> so much <Wow. laughs> and that was like i remember talking to our environment or to our to our programmers everyone's like they're gonna fucking nail this so much they won't believe what it hit them right and wow. it's this right. kind of a, like fire and energy in a way because like that that's how it feels right because so many of us are like you know coming from old red you know old times you know we remember witcher success and so on and th- those people are all there right like they they live through that they know how it is to make a good game there are factors why it happened where it happened but then when we were given an opportunity to make something better to build something as gabe was talking about you know doctor and so on and then there was it was just easier you know to build on that energy in a way to just be like okay we, we stuck with that we want to stick with that ip we'll do something as remarkable as we only can do in any fucking aspect of that like any detail <laughs> like it's minuscule and tiny to this everyone's gonna nail it yeah. and it was like you could feel that energy you, you know that, there's that a lot of anger, depth you know that depth. that that fire <laughs> yeah. and, and that's why i call it like this it's fire it's like it's not rage it's fire it's, it's fire, fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. everyone was heavily motivated to do a great job yeah, it, makes <laughs> sense. it makes perfect sense well I was going to say like because Gabe when we spoke to you about Phantom Liberty like you guys weren't there yet and I didn't want to spoil it for you but towards the latter like towards the end when it basically just turns into a horror game oh, that's what I yeah, really wanted to yeah, talk to yeah, you about yeah, like yeah, yeah, totally. what was the thought process of implementing that what were you looking at to make this sequence because that for me I was sat there going it's fine gonna run and gun it's yeah, gonna be great and then yeah. i was like oh my god this is i haven't felt this way since like alien isolation so it was uh certainly a, a bold move um it started with us thinking about the the black wall and the net and the kind of the unknown of ai and that kind of stuff and just that that deep unknown and that lurking uh threat is in and of itself horrifying like once you kind of go down the thought experiments of all that right and i think that was the kind of seed point that started you know um, especially with the fact that it's an underground facility, at some point it just kind of clicked. It's like, okay, let's let's do this not as some kind of like boss fight or whatever, or, you know, typical like kind of run through RPG, but let's really try to evoke the feeling of the black wall in not only us telling you and showing you, but you experiencing the horror of that, right? Um, and so I think I think a lot of that was the motivation behind us going that way. And then we had individual like quest designers, developers on the team that had some experience with with horror game uh, uh, kind of tip tricks, if you will. And um, at a certain point, I was like, "All right, let's do it. Let's just go for it." And certainly, there was a number of people on the team who was like, oh, "What are we doing?" Uh, but there was enough that was like, "Okay, let's do this. Let's do this." Because I personally always love when in a kind of deep immersive uh, RPG when there's a, a surprise, mm. when there's the unexpected, right? That's just mm. part of it feeling like an actual real world, right? That immersive element, and but it's also, it makes you kind of just be like, wow, they went over and above, right? They didn't do what was expected. Mm. And so these, these were all factors. Mm. Yeah. One, thing, so one thing also that we learned, like I think during working on Phantom Liberty was the fact that on, on like a craft level, it's really useful for the theme, for the, for the team, to have a genre and a theme defined of your story. Now, it may sound a bit basic, but believe me, most times, you know, you don't really do it early you, because you don't know a lot of things is shifting. 
we have started doing that in Phantom Liberty quite a lot. And you feel it, you know, there is a Bond-esque sequence and oh, we yeah. said it to ourselves very early. You know, the name of the quest, you know, my name, I believe is the yeah. name of the quest, is the song from Bond movie. Like, yeah. it, 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 there's so many creative decisions that we took to basically drive that genre or a theme very clearly. Yeah, and that's, that's funny, because that's something I noticed only in my second playthrough uh -huh. of Cyberpunk, you know, because I obviously played it at launch and I was like, yeah, Da, 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 da. When I went back, I'm like, hang on a second. These quest arcs that I'm going through each have a distinct genre. There's like one Mad Max style mm -hmm. thing. There's one film noir style thing. Mm -hmm. There's one sort of like cyber hacking matrix matrix kind of thing. And that didn't jump out at me at first, mm. but it definitely jumped out immediately in Phantom Liberty because it was sort of almost telegraphing those things more clearly. So um, it plus, was just a like growth of the team. Plus you know, that the song at the end of Phantom Liberty. <laughs> God, that is a great song, by the way. That yeah. is just I, fuck, I listen to that all the time to this day. It's just fantastic. A lot of James Bond energy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Pochadwo, like the author of that song, together with uh, Adam and Przybłowicz, our composers. Like this dude is one of the biggest Polish stars. Yeah, like, I heard this that. guy literally s sells like stadiums of like eighty thousand people in an hour. That's crazy. Like yeah. he's one of the biggest stars, and the fact that he's friend, he's our friend, basically. Yeah. <laughs> able to cooperate closely and he's a big nerd to be honest like, <laughs> oh, he helps. loves our games that he helps. loves witcher he left he he even played gwent you know that guy is really into like things that we've been doing nice. so it was in a way maybe easier to just like, convince him to cooperate on that so that was definitely an awesome endeavor to build it together and we had our ask about the theme the bond thing and he, he nailed it yeah Alan, dude yeah. absolutely yeah. crushed it like it's yeah, yeah it's fantastic i um i was curious because my guess so I guess wanted to ask about what's next for the, you know, Cyberpunk 1, right? Because you ship Phantom Liberty and there's minor tweaks here and there. There's still some small patches rolling through, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yep. we have recently shipped 2.12 okay, uh, cool. patch, like, but it was mostly addressing the feedback from the players. Some of the some of the stability because like all of those things you discover also like all of the new things that keep coming out you know like just making sure that our game works well with whatever new tech is there and just sure. that nothing new is 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 starting to you know um, cause issues Conflict. like yeah, sure. right. was two twelve the one with the subway system no 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 that, that was, was two point one okay right two twelve is just a small okay cool thing. so my question then is are there any other sort of smaller content updates coming to the game or is that fully wrapped now and you're only working on bug fixes and maintenance there there, there might be some small things in the future i think I, I mentioned in an interview recently that like um it, it really comes down to the the focus is working on the sequel for cyberpunk um and as opportunities present themselves if there's like a little something kind of a low-hanging fruit if you will and someone on the team is passionate about it like I'm open to it. We're open to it. Um, and I, I, that, that's a factor. The stuff uh, Pavel was talking about with technology, um, for sure. And then um, in addition to that, I mean, who's to say over the next couple of years? But nothing, nothing big, but maybe a little thing here and there. I did see the other day that um, there was a dev team photo that someone found as an Easter egg. Yeah, I mean, like, we oh. added this ages ago, yeah. though. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. people people didn't find so many things. Like, they couple days ago uh, found only, well, a couple days ago, some time ago, they found only, you know, one of the things that we hit in, uh, in UI, that if you hover over the version of the game, it slowly changes to 2 point oh zero seventy seven two oh seventy seven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, yeah. there's, well, many, there's many tiny things things like that, that people didn't find it. So we were just waiting. We were just waiting. Yeah, so you know? and how many other little tiny things are still hiding in the game that you think there's have couple, been found? There's a couple more that I 77. know. 77. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's a couple more. It's also like a bit hard sometimes to track it because of course, you know, the natural place where you look for it is like, I don't know, Reddit forums, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. some social media thing. Like if someone finds it in their house and they're like happy but never share it, then mm. you know, you don't know as a dev that it was found. So yeah. it's just, it's a bit difficult to tell, but there's a couple things. So you don't have anything like Arkham City being in Arkham Asylum. <laughs> Nothing that big. <laughs> did, you, did you hear about that? No. Yeah, like a whole other yeah. realm. So what? There was this whole thing where I think it's in Arkham Asylum. There is, uh, if you do a very, very specific thing, yeah. blow up a specific wall, behind it were the... Uh, the plans for Arkham City. It's like a massive yeah. hit. The yeah. massive... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. I right. think and I've like, seen But people didn't find it for like a year. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, nothing like that. Uh, so with that, uh, you guys have a little something cooking with uh, 2077 and Phantom Liberty. W what is that? 
Um, Pavel, you can do the honors. <laughs> sure, <laughs> go can, for it. I can do the honors. I, I really like that. So uh, what we're going to do is from 28th of March to 1st of April, we have the free trial uh, going out. So basically players on consoles will be able for free to play for five hours. Just check out the game, uh, check out Cyberpunk, what they like. This will be the version to, uh, 2.12, uh, as I said. So, like, latest patch, uh, pretty much just see what's there. Uh, and they can, you know, uh, buy the game if they like it, and they can continue, like, effortlessly with their save uh, playing the game. So that is probably the, the next biggest immediate thing that is going to happen. Cool. So I definitely have questions about that. How do you figure, like, how do you think about, jumping in, people jumping in just for five hours? Do you put them at the very beginning, or, or how does it work? Oh, they do start playing, like, the game in a normal, most, okay. most normal natural game. Right, so start yeah, the yeah. intro, and then they get dumped into Night City, and... They do whatever the... they want, really. Yeah. Like, they can faff around with, you know, whatever yeah. they feel enjoyable. Of course, you know, it's the it's the first, like, area, I would say, so um, maybe that whole content, if you max it out, you could probably do the five hours just there, yeah. but, or you can progress, you cool. know, moving forward. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Speed run, whatever. Sure. Are there speedruns of 2077? Are there? Are there? No. No, there is yeah. none. Because no one, you know, presses space bar to advance dialogue. They all listen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no speedrun. Obviously. You can't. Physically. Can't. <laughs> it's always the ongoing joke in narrative games is like, you know, do you let people skip dialogue or no? And of course it's like, no, don't let them. Yeah. Um, just pivoting a little bit, so um, you guys have so the, we're in Boston right now, um, yeah. and when we was when we knew we were coming to Boston, we were really excited because we're like, whoa, City Project Red is there? They got a studio there? They're building that? Whatever. So we were really excited to talk to you guys about the move to Boston because Boston. you guys at Boston, you guys are currently building a studio in a whole new city that basically none of you are from. Um, and you know, many of you are relocating from Poland to be here. What has that been like? Is in you know the the relocation process, I guess, because we'll talk in a bit about what it means to build a studio. But what's it been like for the people involved to relocate from an, like to an entirely different country to begin building an entirely new video game? Well, well, Pavel certainly has uh, more probably interesting anecdotes on that. So I'll just <laughs> lead with the less interesting ones because I was I repatriated, right? I was oh. in Poland. I repatriated. And I actually am not from the Northeast at all and, and haven't spent much time up here. I've been to a couple of PAXs or whatever. Um, and at first I was like, oh, it's so cold up there. <laughs> um, and then I realized it's actually pretty cl close to Polish weather. So I kind of understood why, mm -hmm. why the board picked it. But uh, it's a charming area. Like, I, I, I got to say, like, the neighborhood's outside, the city downtown here. It's very cool. Um, the, you know, the traffic and the, the drivers, I mean, you know. It's funny, though, like, because I, I complained about it to my brother who, who still lives in the South, and he's like, everyone says that about everywhere they're at. And I'm like, no, but really, yeah. but really it's the worst, <laughs> really I swear, <laughs> I swear. Um, but no, I mean, uh, as far as uh, repatriating here into the Northeast, I, I found it quite uh, charming area so i like it but there's a lot of nuances even when i first went to poland there was nuances i saw in europe you know for example if i wanted a soda i couldn't get a big cup i could only get little cups right that's a and good that's a good thing it depends us, on how you, you look at it right but it's funny because there's so many little things yeah. you know because it's all like western culture yes but there's so many little things and with that, I'll turn it over to Poland. To Poland. <laughs> yeah. To Poland. Yeah. To Poland. Yeah. I yield the floor. Yeah. I yield the floor to Poland. Yeah. So Pavel from Poland, Polish yeah. Yeah. born. Exactly. So what, what have you experienced since you? Oh, I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I wouldn't know where to start. So I don't want to, uh, you know, spend the whole podcast talking about this. But the the move has been very eventful. I think oh. like everything that could go wrong went wrong, aside of plane crashing. That's very dire. That's extremely dire. He still has a smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Still I has mean, a smile to be honest, face. I didn't expect anything else. Uh, so it was it was fine, and, and you know everyone was trying to help. I guess the most they could, but. Oh, um, I mean, you know, my one plane was late, so then I spent up, spent night, uh, night like staying in, um, you know, New York airport. Then the oh, no. airline claimed that I'm not on the on their plane, you know, so they sure. didn't want to give me the ticket. I had to call Poland. I was middle of the night to get my reservation number. They provided me that. Then I got a ticket without luggage. 
Then uh, I had to get a separate ticket for the luggage. I went to the gate. I was oh. at this point like 30 something hours into not sleeping oh, and my ticket didn't work <laughs> on the gate, the ticket that they gave me. So basically I we had to call like a customer support and we tried to find the lady that was helping me out and gave me the not working ticket to convince them. And I was the last one person standing there to fucking oh, get to oh, that you were, you were the guy that everyone was waiting and for. And I was like, and I was saying like, I'm so sorry that it's just if nothing. They basically worked out. But you know what? I arrived. Um, and it was it was fun. But you, you know? arrived when you arrived. Did you even have any furniture? Or no, you? no. I, I arrived. There was nothing. Right. There was like you rent a place in America and it has floor and yeah. walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. yeah. And that a roof. Was, most that was actually a thing. That was actually a thing because when I moved out to Poland, I had you know I was like yeah yeah ship my furniture you know ship yeah, my bed sure. and stuff right and and I remember like you know HR and recruitment and whatever and they were like why and I'm like what do you mean why. Because it's my bed. Sleep on something. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I when I arrived, I realized it's like, oh, in Europe, everything that you rent is furnished already. Okay, or that, I shouldn't say that is Europe. wild. That is not how we do it in Australia either. That is I, not what. That is I, not I shouldn't say works. Europe, but in Poland at least. Right. I mean, I'm sure it's it common varies. in the UK as well. It's it common. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But here, of course, it was a shock for them the other way around. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I was building my IKEA empire for like next couple of weeks. <laughs> Just coming back from work, you know, putting on things, yeah. starting to drill, you know, building a shelf a day, you know, a bed or something. Also, like I had this delivery come in with a furniture and they moved it seven times. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> seven times and completely out of sheer luck. My mattress that I ordered for my bed, they didn't have it in that warehouse that I ordered it from. So they were like, we issue a separate delivery from a different warehouse. Uh, so that's why I got a mattress and a couple of random pieces of, uh, of furniture that were not, you know, like I couldn't ma make anything out of it sure. because the rest wasn't there yeah. because that main warehouse didn't deliver. But that bed being like the mattress arrived. So I had at least a place to sleep yeah, on. Right. <laughs> so it was not a floor. It was a mattress. So, you know this uh, Bostonian luxurious life welcomed me, <laughs> but it was fine. You know, it, I, I honestly had fun uh, with all that move. Then banking system in America, very, very fun. Very Let fun. Let me, Lord, no, we can talk for a long time about <laughs> Wait, that. what's wrong? What are we, what's... The fact yeah, that as an immigrant, you don't have credit, regardless of if you have credit back home. Oh, but you're banking, supposed to have that. Banks don't want to give you an account. Like I yeah. only got mine because my friend recommended me and she was like, she's good for it. She, I swear. Yeah. They're inherently suspicious if you yeah. have no credit. Like it's, oh, it's but something. banking system is stuck in 50s here. Not in 80s, not in 70s, <laughs> not in 60s. It's in 50s. Cool. It's seriously like the fact that I had to get a, a checkbook. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was I like, yeah. they yeah. asked yeah. me, hey, you have an account. Do you need a checkbook? And I'm like, huh? What no. for? I would use a checkbook. <laughs> and then the, the, the next purchase I did, they asked me to for buy, a check. To buy your coffee, of yeah. course. <laughs> the, fact, the fact is that you have to get Venmo just to send money to someone because you can't just do a bank transfer is insane to me. Well. It's, it's yeah. ridiculously yeah. complex. And it's just the fact that, you know, it's you have okay. apps now that read checks so that people could work work around the fact that sometimes you get paid by a check so you don't have to go to a bank to get the money, now you have an app to scan the check. Yep. It's so wild to me. You know, the fact that people require the facts to be sent, you know, still, sure. and some businesses do still do that. I mean, I did the first purchase in America with my bank account. First day, I paid for the trash. My account got reported for fraud and suspended. <laughs> so I called, I called the bank. I talked with them for 40 minutes. They said they cannot help. I have to go in person. I went in person. We spent like an hour with that person. And that dude was so nice. But he was from, I think, Nepal. And he had a very complicated name and surname. And he had to give them by the letters every single time. And we were switched four times to a different person. Sure. So every time he was trying to tell them who he is as a worker first so that mm. they will actually help me but first he was he had to prove them that he is an actual employee of the bank so it was fun and i made my and i made i got my account back and i was like yes american life everything will be fine now next day i made a payment my account got suspended oh my <laughs> Well, that sounds fun, it's man. for your protection, Pavel. Yeah, trying to protect right. you I against feel so fraud. protected. They're trying right. to protect you against fraud. Extremely protected. So, so how many people are relocating from Poland to join the studio? 
Uh, around many 10 or something? Yeah. Around 10. Yeah. Okay. Around 10, yeah. So that's yeah. not that many then, right? No, but those are the leadership. most leadership. directors yeah. Yeah. that we had in Phantom Liberty okay. and Cyberpunk. Okay. Because like that group is not that big. Got it, got it, got yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Okay, so is the intention then to hire up everybody else? Like you're going to hire? Yeah. Okay, and then how many people will you be hiring? Like what's the goal in terms of headcount at the studio? Well, um... I'm not sure if I can say okay, specifically, sure. but I mean, it's sort of the typical amount for big AAA games. That's a lot. Though. Like a lot. Usually a, that's like three to four hundred people. Well, to be to be clear, um, uh, there will be uh, many in Warsaw still, Okay, but it'll be more of the uh, types of disciplines that you can kind of work asynchronously. Got it, got it, got it. As opposed to synchronously, sure. uh, collaborative on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and, and so that's kind of generally the strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. And we already, like, started hiring, of course, you know, some time mm -hmm. ago. You heard about some names uh, of the people that joined us uh, because, like, we issued that press release with, like, a couple mm -hmm. names. So there is, like, a couple big uh, people that joined us. Uh, we so got some more coming up as well. Exactly, yeah. cool. and yeah. there's more. Ah, interesting. So and maybe right. by the time this airs, it'll already be. All right, All right. Yeah. yeah, cool. Right, so these are people that we would know from their work on other games. They yeah. Said, okay. Yeah. On the, like, big AAA releases. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess there's a lot of layoffs happening right now across the industry, like, a lot in terms of sure. 18 yeah. and a half thousand That's people. Really in the last 14 months are you you know are you are you finding a lot of applicants like how is that as someone that yeah. as a team that's building a lot of uh, building a studio right now are you feeling that talent availability because of those layoffs certainly yeah and it's, it's sort of an awkward position to be in because it's definitely fortunate for us that we have uh, so much great talent to kind of um, hire from but yeah it's uh, obviously a really rough situation in the industry yeah. 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 And and like I mean, from our perspective, it's 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 a great position to be at because like so many people are reaching out. Actually, even before we announced like all the openings Positions, and so on, yeah. we had like a flood of like CVs and people actually wanting to work with us, which is amazing to you know to be there. And we we need to make sure that the ramp up uh, and the way we build the studio is of course proper. Mm -hmm. It's not that we can like immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, get everyone, but um, yeah, no, we're not, we're not going. Vision. We're not going zero. You know, well, I'd say ten percent to a hundred percent overnight. Like we, we're ramping it sort of responsibly with the phases of the project. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with that said, there's there's positions that we need filling mm. even at the moment. Yeah, for sure. So I, I guess one of the things that's really interesting is that you guys are building a studio from scratch. Uh, and not a sort of like little indie studio of like six people. You're talking about building a AAA studio from mm. scratch, right? Mm. And we're curious, how does that actually work? Like <laughs> what is that involved in yeah. building a AAA studio in terms of office space and laptops and fucking whatever? Like all, everything that you need to put, what is, can you just like in broad strokes talk about what it means to build a new sure. studio from scratch? Sure, yeah. Well, first, I'd like to qualify the from scratch thing. Sure. We, have, we have the benefit of a, a lot of support from, you know, Warsaw, obviously. And like we mentioned, a number of us moved over from Poland uh, to kind of seed to start the studio. So um, huge advantage on that front. Um, but yeah, I mean, from there, you know, we got, we got an office space that we're, we're, we're in right now. It only can seat so many, and we're going to go to a bigger one. And I mean, there's stuff from wall decorations to figuring out the hiring priority or the, the position priorities uh, that we got to get into. There is, uh, I mean, stuff like uh, food, you know, kitchen, you know, I mean, it's facilities, it's development, it's the whole, the whole gambit. But again, we have, um, you know, facilities from Warsaw that help, HR from Warsaw that help, recruitment from Warsaw that helps. And we hire, you know, HR recruitment out here. We hired administration out here. And then, of course, again, about 10 of us coming from Poland to as developers to hire the next kind of uh, level of developers and fill that out and so on and so forth. Um, that's the really broad strokes. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of some more kind of nuanced anecdotes that I'm sure would be interesting. And I'm well, I, I have so many. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have plenty. I mean, uh, I started working Red in uh, 2012, at the very beginning, end of 2011. So I was number 86, employee number 86. And I saw wow. the studio grow from 86 to 1,400 that we are right now. So in a way, I saw, you know, how you kind of structure that right now. Um, so what we are doing is like, and that was a lot on, on Gabe's side, is to uh, be sure that first we have that um, grand like structure of directors let's say in leadership that was like the most important focus point for us for like last couple of months I would say and that's slowly to be almost done there and then you know of course you know we are working leads and all the senior and expert talent uh, that we want to have so that's the way you structure it so like you start from fundamentals I would say when it comes to the the team then there is of course you know everything as, as Gabe said about the the office uh, you know Polish people coming over and complaining on the coffee you know in America <laughs> it's very fair it's a very fair complaint coffee here sucks this is fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so so those are actually like really basic things like this uh sometimes and, and honestly, you know, from figuring out, you know, the equipment, you know, the mouses and keyboards and, and pads, you know, like for, for you know, for a daily work um, almost to like things like trips, you know, to Vancouver because we have a studio in Vancouver that is working with us, right? Like a, uh, that just does a studio that set up a couple of years ago that they work with us on, on uh, Cyberpunk. They're part of Red as well. So and then cooperation with War. So it's like setting those things up. So there's like, I would say, multiple layers of that from, from funny, the a, office. A, fu a funny anecdote group. is that um, uh, we have a amazing kind of like snack closet. Tell me more. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's amazing in American terms. And, and oh, also like, oh. this is so unhealthy. Where's yeah. the healthy food? Where, where's my fruit? Can we have some apples? And yeah. I'm like, here's a Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a game dev studio. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the Mountain Dew. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It. It's funny. So the plan is for everyone to be in studio, kind of, or as uh, remote an opportun uh, opportunity? Well, well I mean, uh, right now, um, everyone in the Boston office is in in office um, at least three days a week. Um, uh, I personally, I'm old school. I love being in the office. Uh, so I'm, I go five days a week most of the time. How about you, Pavel? <laughs> I do most of the week uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well in the office, though I, I really like a remote because of many reasons. But I think at this stage, it's incredibly important to be close and discuss those those things together. That being said, like just to be sure that we can hire talent all over the world in like, our one of our base guidelines is we are hiring the best in business and nothing else. That that's it. That's basically what we are doing, and um, that means that we really have to be open to that. Uh, so definitely, there there are and there is and there will be more remote options just because like we want the best talent. In the world. That's really interesting. So, in your view, to get the best talent in the game industry at the moment, you have to provide a remote option. In some cases, yeah. In some cases, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in some cases, it, practically, it's not, it won't work. And so it's really just comes down position mm -hmm. by position, case by case. And, um, for example, all of my direct reports, the, the sort of senior directors, um, I needed them locally. Mm -hmm. And so it was a requirement. Um, but then, and then I leave it up to each of my directors to say, okay, do you need your leads um, and it's up to you on how you want to manage the team. And yeah. then I, I, and then once we get down to like uh, you know senior and specialist level, I think it gets a lot more flexible at that front for most positions. Mm -hmm. Some positions would be an exception. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it really just comes down to and especially as as Pavel said, we're in addition to building the studio, we're in the sort of the the vision uh, stage and the prototype stage. And so a lot of it is like heavily iterative, a lot of conversations, hallway conversations, so mm. to speak, water cooler conversations, that kind of stuff, um, which obviously there's techniques to facilitate that online as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's the stage that we're in. Yeah, right. And as so I'm going to guess there's a studio boss, like a head of studio. Is that that's not you, is it? I mean, are you playing that role as well as to some extent? Yeah. Right, I mean, okay. I'm a board member of the of the entity out here sure. um, and a VP. So to some extent, yes. But again, I have another uh, VP of operations yeah. who's helping me as well. Um, uh, Tomek. Uh, hi, right. Tomek. Um, and, uh, yeah, and a bunch of support from the, the, the Warsaw. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I guess my question is sort of around what percentage of your work right now is building this studio versus 
visioning for the game, right? And I guess it's for, to, for you as well, Pavel. I would say I would say it's um, a couple months ago it might have been 50-50, okay. but right now I'd say it's almost 90-10 the game. Oh, nice. interesting. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So your VP operations is leading that process. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. much so. So much so right. with, you know, the snacks, the decorations. Of course, the Rice Krispie bars, for sure. HR, yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. So we're able to uh, focus on the game, which okay. is important, obviously. And how about for you? Is that... Oh, similar. Yeah. Similar, really. Like, I mean, also the fact that we have, like, scaled up slightly already and we have... Uh, the directors group uh, working together well because we've been knowing each other for a long time. That's one thing. Uh, other people that we hire, they're, they're also filled those gaps. Uh, and the group of leads that's being built up in a way, so that helped us out as well to spread that responsibility a bit. Uh, so like everyone can build their own like sort of a part of the studio branch in a way. So we can handle uh, things like this. So yeah, the game became, became like a bit more... Uh, of the spotlight now. And I, I should qualify that because um, uh, when it comes to recruitment of the development team especially, that obviously occupies time. Sure. And yeah. that's part of it. I was counting that in the 90%, yeah, yeah, by yeah. the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it makes the sense. 10 was kind of like the office facility mm. type thing. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. so. Should we, is this when we ask them about their next game and they won't really give us an answer? You Should do we do it. that? Yeah, 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 do so, it. How's, the new, how's the new game going? What can you guys tell us about it? <laughs> oh, we were waiting for this question. <laughs> Hold this talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we're having a lot of fun. Like, honestly, we're in a really fun a cool stage. Answer. Yeah. Um, Outside of the banking system. But, but yeah, and all your, all your trials and tribulations. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because I love talking about the game. I love, you know, developing games. And so I'd love to talk openly, but you know how it goes. I can't, <laughs> of course, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got some exciting ambitions. We're all very motivated and, um, you know, a lot of creativity pouring in and a lot of great synergy. I, I wanted to ask about like approach, because obviously you can't talk about details, but is the approach to building this game different than it was with the first game. And I mean, you probably can't answer that because you joined later in the process, but yeah. for you, Pablo, like, are you seeing a different approach to building the sequel than you saw with the first game? Oh yeah, I mean, 100%. The approach is the extension of what we did with Gabe for Phantom Liberty. And I've all about that, Gabe can, can, can talk a lot on, but uh, it I can definitely feel it, the team can see it, you know, because there's loads of people that we work with on this game that did, uh, you know, the previous uh, Cyberpunk or uh, The Witcher 3 uh, with us, and the approach is quite different. In, in any specific ways you can share? <laughs> well, I mean, we are, like, all the all the good lessons I think we learned when working on Phantom Liberty are trying to apply. Like, one thing that like, we touched uh, just, just a moment before, you know, things like uh, talk, touching our craft, defining a genre, or a mm. theme of the things, you know? So things that we learned, all of those lessons, we are just stacking them up and just trying to, you know, put, not, not trying really, like putting them in use uh, when working on this game. Uh, I, I think there's just some of the things may feel a bit obvious, you know, but they are not <laughs> at all, mm. especially when you have a gigantic team uh, collaborating. Mm. Yeah. Just touching on Unreal very quickly, how has the transition to that been? How, how's that going at this point? Um, I mean, it's going well. Like uh, we're, we're, we're prototyping stuff. We're able to jump in there and start prototyping stuff really quickly. We've got, uh, certainly there's a, there's a couple of uh, challenges with some of our ambitions, which again, I can't get into, but uh, the tech directors, engineering directors all feel very uh, optimistic about everything that we're approaching and excited. And so, yeah, I mean, overall, good. Cool. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're excited to see what you guys got cooking. Yeah. Good luck. Welcome right. to America. We got everything figured out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the American motto, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see you guys soon. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And it's been a pleasure, uh, guys, to be here with you. Honestly, I watch you on stage. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. It was fun. Thank you. All right. See you. Bye-bye. All right, uh, fantastic interview. Thank you very much uh, to the uh, to Gabe and to Powell for hosting us. Well, I guess we hosted them, technically speaking, yeah. in the office, but they were very generous to like spend the time with us. I really do appreciate that a lot. Um, we're going to go into the final block of the show now, talking about what we're playing. Before then, we thought we'd do one or two more user questions because there were quite a few from the Twitter feed. I think we had over a hundred and so we <laughs> want to make sure that we actually get to a few more of them yeah. so that people don't feel shortchanged how about this one uh naked jakey i heard you co-hosting this week do you have any tips on how to properly adult when you're still a big kid at heart at heart asking for a friend 
Mm, I mean, I think... I, th- I was kind of saying it before, too, in a different context, but, like, I think just accepting and realizing that no one really knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> like, that you are not any more adult than someone else, even if it, like, seems like they are, that it's, like, also just write things down. <laughs> I feel like that's what I have to Use the calendar app on your like, phone like, so you don't forget. Make lists of shit? Yeah, make lists, make right. to-do lists, mm-hmm. use the calendar app, put in people's birthdays so you don't forget. That's a big one. Just set it to repeat every year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes make sense. Make a list. Like, crossing off a list is, you know, do it on your phone. You can add emojis next to things you don't mm-hmm. want to do. Makes it funnier. I don't know. Yeah. Make, yeah, it, make sure. a game out of it. I think just make a game out of anything. I think that's the advice. Gamify. <laughs> Gamify stuff. Gamify Gamify life. Gamify the dishes. Fuck it. Okay. I mean, well, hey, nice. I have um, recurring chore reminders. And really? like, okay. oh yeah, so like every day I have a different chore so nothing like bunches up at the weekend. So, you know, mm-hmm. one day I'll be changing my sheets That's or something smart. and it's like, just knock it off. I'm ready to go. It's good. Yeah. That's my one tip. No, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, uh, I mean. Also drink a lot probably... of water. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh 100%. yeah. Also, yeah, that's st- something move I will around. Say. Like, dude, if uh, I'm not even being funny, the last like five years, I've noticed <laughs> that because I'm just, you know, sat like a shrimp the whole time, I'm getting aches and pains. Yeah, Oof. same. I, it's the, all the basic stuff. Make sure you're eating. Make sure you're drinking. Wait, and, you how know, are you getting whole... aches and pains? You sit on an exercise ball. Yeah, man. I mean, that my posture is not great. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, actually, on the exercise ball, what, 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 what is the story? What is the what is the deep lore of the exercise ball? Tell us where it came from. Oh, and, well, the, um, and someone else asked, has us, it always been the same exercise ball? Has it always ball? been the same ball? No, well, I know that's what that I was about one. to say. This is, yeah. this, is, this is number two. It was mm-hmm. one up until the Bethesda video because it popped when I was using it outside. But this one is also from my sister who gave me the first one. And the first one was from when she had her first kid and I was living with her. And I was starting to do green screen stuff and I couldn't fit on frame because I'm really tall, I'm like 6'4". And so I was You're like, 6'4"? Oh, yeah, I was like, I Damn, need to man, sit on something. Damn, that's crazy. I would not have guessed that. Okay, oh, right. Yeah. All right, sweet. Yeah, cool, um, cool. All right. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, I should sit on something. And I was living with her and the ball, I think, was like in the hallway outside my room. So I saw it and I sat on it. And then once I was looking at the footage, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was basically once I like realized I could keyframe me like whipping around and changing the size, I was like, oh, that's I showed my brother and we were both like, oh, that's pretty funny. Um, and then, yeah, this one was when she had her second kid and I just stole this one too. And it also <laughs> happened to be gray and it's bigger and stir- you could tell by the thumbnail that on the uh, the returning the Red Dead 2 video, I'm hitting the same pose, but the ball looks way bigger than the other <laughs> thumbnails. It's because this ball is bigger <laughs> and the angle, I'm like, it's, I, uh, look at it. You'll see it's huge compared to the other ones. It's, it's I loved massive. your sister's cameos in the uh, Starfield video. Uh, yeah, dude, loading screen. Oh my god! She, she, I just Fast gave her some loading lines. screen. Is there loading some, screen. <laughs> some of the funniest, dude. She'll appreciate that. Some of the funniest stuff she did. Like I, I had the lines written out because originally I was gonna do something. And her baby had been watching a bunch of Miss Rachel, which is like who she's supposed to be. And then after a while, I was like, why the fuck am I doing it? Like, you should do it. You do the voice way better. And then I just had her ad lib stuff of like, sure. obviously like leather jacket and the stuff I told her to say, but a lot of it of like, <laughs> loading screen. Oh, lo- yeah. Like, peekaboo, loading screen. That was all her. <laughs> like, like does, she play, does she play games? Uh, yeah. I mean, no, like, we played like bunch of kirby and mario kart and shit growing nice. up like she's she's not she's not actively playing a bunch of stuff but she'll play like minecraft with us and stuff so yeah right 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 yeah what about um actually probably one last one which what do you reckon about like you reckon someone could start on youtube today do you reckon someone can make a start on youtube today make a go of it and if so what advice would you give that person uh natural growth at least on youtube is really fucking hard i mean this was before shorts i know some people have luck with shorts because sometimes the algorithm will recommend me a short that has like two comments and two likes and i'm like i don't know why it's showing me this but like it's kind of good because it shows that they are pushing stuff that isn't um all of that just to say that like my the root of my audience definitely came from reddit and went from like basically nothing to like four thousand people in a matter of days so that's like i think that's the harsh reality of youtube is that you kind of have to get it externally but like as far as trying to do it as like a job i think as long as you're just actually making stuff that you care about and that you Mm. want to be making and enjoying the process like 
yeah, at the end of the day, you want views, you want to get paid, all that stuff. Like, I'm not saying it's not important, but I think you have to actually just like and care about what you're doing. And people can definitely pick up on that. But yeah. also, like, using the tools of TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, like, there are ways to get growth. It seems like specifically TikTok, but YouTube itself is pretty damn stingy until you get mm. to a certain point, I think would be the the harsh reality. Um, but I, I think it's possible. I think it's just... Yeah, you just have to like make stuff that also you feel like you want to watch and that isn't just a totally. copy of someone else because it's the same thing of like not making a cyberpunk video because it's like, what the fuck am I going to say that hasn't already been said? I think I think a lot of people buy the equipment, whether there's a streamer, YouTuber, they buy all the stuff, they set it up and they're just like, I'm going to do it. And they never actually thought about like, why would anyone want to watch this? Mm. You know? I think that simple question is like, if you don't want to watch it, why the fuck would yeah. anyone else want to? Yeah. I mean, I've always said on YouTube, I think this like simple way to look at it is either say something new or find a new way to say it. If you can Ooh, do one of those two things. Bars. You That's great. Wow. <laughs> You're going to find an audience. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, but it's hard to do those things. Like it really is. It's very hard. And it takes you time as well to find your voice you know like don't imagine you're going to come oh, out there and immediately yeah my know who you are <laughs> yeah like i look back at my old videos i'm like fuck man <laughs> yeah. i gotta delete these you i know? used to cringe at it but now it's like i don't yeah, know i exactly. kind of like it it's kind of wholesome it's the same with the music that it's like oh, i could take it down this but i'm like no it, it's like it's, your it's all part of it it's, yeah. all, it's, your journey. it's all part That's of it. it i just yeah, i don't yeah. i mean i've a game spot so it's like it's a different thing where it's not really mine but i don't even go back and there's just so Look many your old stuff. no i just yeah. i just don't sometimes it kind of crops I, up and like oh i remember this video you made i was like no yeah yeah, yeah. no i really like, don't no, make that. I, remember I, that video <laughs> <laughs> who is this woman <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. which hair color was, and haircut was this I don't you're know, like I don't i'm know a computer her. boy now who the fuck is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there have been some hair colors haven't there Lucy? hey hey now yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh um, someone on our team, John Luke, found a bunch of behind-the-scenes E3 2015 footage. Okay. Yep. And I don't know her. I don't. I did not recognize myself. It's so weird. Just thinking that was coming out in 2015. That, that was like- that was the E3 PlayStation Showcase of Dreams. That was Shenmue oh, Three, yeah. um, Last Guardian, and Final Fantasy VII Remake. I will oh. never forget that. And I think Kingdom Hearts Three. And you're not gonna forget that for a different reason. I was in the audience for that one. Roxas, Zenmu, Zenord, Zenord. Oh God, Riku, ben. Kyrie, they're my friends. <laughs> um, but no, I just, I just look at that old footage. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to know what shit I was saying back then. You know? Yeah, I hear you. I was I hear probably you. stuff you'd get canceled for. Yeah, but I would have I would have sounded more British when I was saying it. Not this mess. You of sound an pretty British still today. By the way. I'm gonna sound really British when I come back. From I'm the sure UK. you will. I'm sure you will. Um, but boys, what so, you been? What you been playing? We've been doing. We've been doing. Elden Ring. Elden Ring. You've been, you've been so how many hours Elden Ring on your? Did you play it on Steam or PlayStation or what? Play so Steam. first, first like one and a half. Like the main character that I did like everything on like. 100 plus hours ps5 um and then i started another character on there and that probably did like half of the main like remembrances like i Mm. i put in a decent amount of time and then what was your finally playing it on pc on steam deck and i'm like very early days i'm like level 26 like this is the character i started playing it recently because like a lot of people i'm like i want to do a character up to the point of the dlc the dlc like yeah what builds did you run like what we imagine? I, did you run Elon of, Musk's but... two shield build? Did <laughs> Dude, you run that, that one? So funny. <laughs> that 900 is, uh, IQ build. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. Did you do that one? Dude, every time I see that pop up, it's so good. <laughs> I, uh, I once I was, I was like a lot of people where I started with samurai because I've always liked the katanas. I saw some stats yeah. that it's like the meme of like everyone's just katana, but I. So that was Uchi like man. my bread and Uchi. butter was doing just like a quality build. Not, not, never been a huge magic uh, feller. But then in the later half of the game, I went like slightly more respect, like strength, a little bit over dex. And I was mostly rocking the guts, great sword. But then if I needed something faster, I would switch to the katana. So like mm. 
a lot of the times i i was switching it up a lot towards the end like for uh why can I not remember her name? Fucking hardest boss. Mel- 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 Melania. 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 I always forget if it's Melina or Melania. I don't know. <laughs> I think for that, what got me through that was Bloodhound Step plus just two-handing mm-hmm. Katana, just trying to get that bleed. But I, like, with all those games, I love going into it blind and not looking as much stuff up as I can. But I think another thing with specifically Elden Ring is it's so big and there's so many things you can miss that it's like, you can min max as much or as little as you want because thinking about it now and coming back to it, it's like, oh man, if I was dual wielding katanas and they both had blood affinity stacked and I was like actually proccing, you know, you can go off the deep end with it. So I didn't really have any like really min max builds, but it was mostly just like, yeah, put a bunch of points into strength and vigor and just hit things with a big sword. And also the buckler parry because the the iframes or the window is way more generous. So that was my bread and butter was just like parries and then guts, great sword. Mm. for the most part but on this run i'm rocking dual wield not ultra great swords but just regular great swords and i want to put frost on both of them and then have like a little dagger with flame to switch to because after you proc frost if you hit them with fire it resets it so you can do it again i'm off the deep end with it oh my god (laughs) yeah do you watch bushy's runs on yes i do i couldn't remember he was is he still cranking those out because yeah i think he did one like three weeks ago i used to regularly watch those and i i hope they're still doing really well because like the amount of work and editing mm. that goes into those videos is insane that's so good like yeah. i'm all, I'm also at the i really want to replay elden ring pre dlc yeah. yeah. everyone is yeah just time, need to spare though. 120 hours that's all easy i know no problem, that's it it's it's mostly just because i was traveling and it was something that i have on the steam deck but like I'm also playing Resident Evil 4 again on Professional because it's What a just, game, man. It's so fucking I'm talking fun. remake or original. Remake. I mean, I remake. love them both, but remake is like... It's unbelievable. So, my, my brain says that my favorite game last year was Baldur's Gate, but I think yes. my heart says Resident Evil 4 because that's the one I keep playing. Like, I just... Sure. I, I can't stop playing that game and it's I need to play something else, but... It's unbelievable. Like what they did with that, how good it feels to control him, mm-hmm. just how brilliant that world is. It's Everything. So, like it's just it's, it's just it's just flawless, man. Like it's just as a top to bottom video game. And, and they to, had all the odds stacked against them for that to yeah. just not be good, especially after the Resident Evil three remake and just how underwhelming that was and that Resident Evil Four yeah. is everyone's favorite. But it's just like every time I play it, I'm just the the way it even runs on Steam Deck, I'm just like, I don't know how this yes. game exists. It's yeah. so good. I know it's i remember playing it on steam deck prior to launch and i was just like how is this running this well it doesn't make any and sense just, to me you the know gun sounds Black magic. and the it, anyways i love that yeah game. yeah yeah that's cool yeah i um i would love to be able to go back and redo elder ring i think i'll just have to jump straight back in with my existing character though for the dlc so good luck that that yeah exactly right that time commit and i think one some of the most interesting commentary i've seen around elden ring is like they're like is it from soft's best game probably yes maybe okay i know i'm pissing off bloodborne people but like yeah i buckled a little bit when let you me, said that let me finish let me finish let me i'm finish, somewhere right? in between I'm, yeah that's, yeah that's it right because yeah. then you could say so you could say elden ring because nothing comes close to it in terms of scope mm-hmm. scale mm-hmm. just like the number of things in this video game that are all possible and that all work and the, how epic your journey is it's so massive it's unbelievable it's impossible to hold it all in your head at once right but at the same time it's like well you can't really replay it because it's too big. There's too much of it. And some of the beauty of many of FromSoft's games is the fact that they are so replayable and that that replayability allows you to continue to appreciate its finer details and, and master it like never before. And obviously we come you come to like Bloodborne and Sekiro when you go down that path, right? And you're like, well, Sekiro had the best melee combat of any action game ever. And then Bloodborne has just kind of the best of everything all at once, you know? So I don't know. I think there's arguments for each of those games being the best. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy that one studio made three games that could arguably be considered <laughs> some of the best games ever made. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, what a, like a, that body of work is insane. I, I think you nailed it on the head that I think the one I like to replay the most is Bloodborne. And I think if I yeah. had to pick one gun to my head, it'd probably still be that. But like, it's replaying Elden Ring is weird because again, like, because it's not as linear as like Bloodborne, 
when you know all the crazy shit that's around the map, the first time you play it, and especially if you're not looking stuff up like I didn't, it feels really mm -hmm. satisfying to kind of come up with your own build that's probably mm -hmm. not going to be that good. So the game is still plenty challenging and it's your own adventure. But like going back to it and knowing everything that's in it, it's yeah, it's very hard to have that same experience without that nagging feeling of like, well, I know I could just go get flame, grant me strength and this yeah, other yeah, thing yeah. and this thing and this thing. And it kind of it turns it more into like busy work than just like a game. Whereas like, yeah, you can min max stuff in Bloodborne, but I feel like not nearly as much of like, yeah. you still have to do this area into this area. Into this. So I'm kind of approaching Elden Ring in that way intentionally this time where I just looked up a list of like recommended level in order. And I'm like purposefully mm. just doing it in the typical order because I want that experience of like, I want it to be challenging, but I also... I am going to run over here to grab this sword and grab this. And it's, yeah, it is weird. My, it's a very unique thing where it's like, you can't ever really play it the same again, kind of like breath of the wild. It's like, you, you kind of get that first time, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's an arcade quality to like dark souls and Sekiro and bloodborne, you know, they are, especially as you get those later runs down and you can finish it in like, you know, a couple of hours. Cause you know exactly where to go, exactly what to do, whatever. Um, that you just can't get out of Elden Ring. It is it is about that first time discovery. It is about like fucking around and when you when you understand all of its disparate components, then yeah, you can break it really easily and it's much less satisfying as a result of that. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, having obviously replayed the only from soft game that I've replayed multiple times is Dark Souls. Um and yeah, I obviously like got platinum or whatever in that because that game just sort of invites that. Mm -hmm. Whereas I look at Elden Ring and I'm like, I wish I had 120 hours, but I know that I yeah. don't. <laughs> so it's just not going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is which is a real bummer. But yeah, yeah, right. So so that's what you're playing right now. Anything else? Anything else playing? Just mm -hmm. that. You said you were playing Max Payne 3. I mean, I'm always playing Max Payne 3. Yeah, okay, okay, fair wait, enough. dude. Hang on, let me ask you how you feel. Sorry, go Liz. No, I was going to say, I saw health on Tuesday. And they did not play anything from Max Payne 3, sadly. Oh. But... I, I was, I, uh, it was so nice. I met Johnny from Health at, yeah. a, at a, a random party. And he like, I was like kind of trying to get up the nerve to say something to me. And then he was like, yo, are you Jake? Because he'd like seen one of my videos. Because <laughs> he's like, such a huge oh. gamer. And I, like basically spent the whole next hour just talking about how much I love the Max Payne 3 soundtrack and how much it meant Same. to me and just their experience working with Rockstar. It was super yeah. cool. Super nice guy. Bet. Yeah, I met um, him briefly in the merch line. He was very nice. <laughs> yeah. Why was he in the merch line? To buy his own merch? No, he, he just was like, hangs out. <laughs> yeah, he's just wearing his whole shirt. He's like, I got a coupon code I got to spend. <laughs> yeah. I, um, look at yeah, cool. the game list. I think that, yeah, it's it's. I haven't really been playing anything new. It's just Elden Ring, Resident Evil 4. I was playing a bit of Sekiro, um, but I... I, when I had stopped playing it before, it was right after you beat the first main boss and you have to fight the fucking flame bowl. And I did it twice and I sure. died. And I was like, this uh -huh. fight is, I love that game, but there's so many fights more so than other FromSoft games where I'm just like, I don't want to fucking do this right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah no. that's definitely my feeling of my, like, as I recall back to that game. My confidence in, in my Sekiro ability really went downhill when I saw uh, Mitritz beat it blindfolded. What? That's I, so wild, like, man. Oh yeah! Oh, this was a GDQ people... run from a couple years ago, and he beat it blindfolded. He beats <laughs> he beats Sekiro blindfolded, and then he's also there's an Elden Ring one where they do it blindfolded. How you, like, are there enough audio cues to know when? To, I mean, I guess you can kind of <laughs> parry dance. Like, it's pretty yeah. it, it's pretty generous with it, but yeah, Jeez, it's insane. No, it's it's an incredible video, and it's so hype as well. And it's because also I think Lil Aggie is doing the. Um, he's doing the commentary because Mitrids can't say anything, but Little Aggie's doing it and he has really bad COVID at the time. So he's just like <laughs> coughing up a lung, desperately trying to get through and explain what he's doing. And then he's doing all this incredible shit. But the, the Blazing Bull fight was, made me feel bad in a, in a yeah, good way. That, I hate that fight so much. It's just like, <laughs> this is a game about fighting people with swords. Why am I fighting this bull? It's mm. so stupid. Yeah. Anyways, you're just gonna piss off the Sekiro people now. Watch out! I, I this, love the that comment game. section was going so well. Like <laughs> I mean, we I'm had a bit of, we had a I'm bit of Kingdom Hearts because I'm rage. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Is yeah, I'm, that's the I, thing. That's me too. Me too. That's why I was like, I look back and I'm like, God, I really sucked with that game. I finished it. That final boss fight. It's like the hardest boss fight I've ever done in a yep. single player offline game. Same. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Felt like I was soloing like a hard mode raid from WoW back in the day, except I was doing it on my own. 
and uh yeah and so then you're just left with this feeling of like fuck that game and then later on you're like yeah it was pretty good i guess yeah <laughs> no it, it, i've seen so many people say like in a lot of ways it's actually FromSoft's easiest game and i'm like okay fuck you <laughs> no up. like i get Shut what you're saying there, right? once once you get My... it and you realize you have to be aggressive and that you can yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. generous with animation canceling and all that it's like i get that but fuck you i struggled <laughs> yeah, with that right. game way more than any for me it's like that's the hardest and then probably Elden Ring in some ways, and then Bloodborne, and then but sure, yeah, sure. That's just my own experience. What um, what have you been playing, Luz? Well, that's the thing. So I went to GDC and PAX. So this is a real ask me anything because I've played a lot of shit. All right, I saw, go on. I saw Game Scent. I saw oh, the AI sniffing shit. Well, that I also Jeff saw oh, he was fuck. promoing. <laughs> I also saw Nvidia's AI. Oh, that's right. Thing yep, I saw. Sure love ai i Gotta went to love it <laughs> i went to day of the devs and i played a fucked up game where you go to a ranch and the, all the horses are just naked dudes with horse masks on like i really i've done the gamut um yeah. wait first of all i want to hear about the ai scent thing and i want yeah. first of all explain it because i'm sure most people don't know what this is so game scent is smell vision for gaming uh, they've brought it back. They actually sent one to the office. I haven't tried it uh, at, in, a, in a home situation just yet. Um, okay. If you can hear any noises in the background, I'm really sorry. This is a peak. My cat is playing before dinner Can't hear hours. Anything. We're all good. Um, but so Game Scent is this little box that you plug in through an HDMI splitter into your PlayStation or whatever. And using uh, using AI, basically, they've trained an AI an ai to listen out for certain sound effects and it figures out you know if you if it can hear leaves go in or in the background or if it can hear crackle of fire it knows that you're in a forest or there's fire and it's like this little barrel where there are six different scents and it just pff, releases it up in the air it just farts in your room it, it farts a little <laughs> farts a little air cloud yeah, in um basically. but there's but there's um restrictions on it so it can only do it every two minutes or something they're releasing a movie version so there's movie scents there's an, what is I, want, it I want to i want to spell scent? what spice smells like game scent <laughs> so what if you like get teabagged in halo like what is it <laughs> well so that's the thing so like they don't have Men's sense for shout. everything and that's i i even said it to them like I think you guys kind of messed up by not launching with a Twitch integration and gross out smells because yeah. that is such an easy. Get... Yeah. Twitch would just constantly <laughs> spam farts though. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else they would Wait. do than hit the fart button over and over again. You'd have Twitch streamers <laughs> gagging. But I've done that. Because South Park did a um, the Nozulus yeah. Rift thing, so that one. Oh I mean, maybe God. they thought, oh yeah, I've been there, done that with the with the fart smells. But honestly, like, it's gimmicky as hell. It was fun they're doing more sense and that you could but the thing is is like you can swap them out or you can have two and daisy chain them you will have like twist streamers with a blanket over them <laughs> over their microphone and keyboards like don't look at me it, you know um, doing it like a freaking like huffing it getting high <laughs> <laughs> just getting high off the scent of uh i don't know uh, blood okay, the so blood's one they're adding is do, scent do DLC. you think this do you think this product will catch on will this be a success i think it's gonna catch on fire yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the thing they were like oh because it went viral um it, it did i don't know they kind of said like it surpassed their expectations and stuff am i gonna get one and have it in my apartment no but no um, definitely not some people will maybe they'll have movie scent and like if i don't know if they had a dune one where they had a smell of spice sure. oh, what is it what does this uh still suit smell like nothing good yeah. i guarantee you that nothing it smells good. like that halo tea bag yeah <laughs> <laughs> the still suit does the same, same thing as strain. master chief suit yeah it recycles the comp you know what I mean? so, <laughs> it's not gonna smell great you know what i'm saying um so no so uh yeah that was that was my first other, other than day of the devs that was like my first gdc appointment so that's crazy yeah right what about any video games what what video games do you, besides the naked horse uh that one's called horses game. that game is messed up it's, it's just called horses it's right? called like, you should look up the, the movie called plane or whatever <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> right? what's it about horses all right that's what we're yeah. calling it but it's about okay. naked people wearing okay. masks and shit um 
what else did I play? I played a little bit of Axis Unseen, which is uh, the game from uh, Nate Perkipile, who worked on a bunch of Bethesda games, and he's making this big open world thing by himself, basically. Uh, but I didn't get too much uh, time to play on that, but I do have a build of it to play at home. Uh, I played a little bit of a game. They actually also sent me the, the thing is about Day of the Devs. It's such an awesome event. It is like open to the public. There's so many cool games um, just on the show floor that you can just go walk around and play. But if you make appointments there, it's kind of a nightmare because it's so busy. And so you don't really yeah. get enough time. So I was really fortunate that a lot of the devs I spoke to, because they're all just cool indies, they were like, oh, I'll just send you a build. So I have all this um, to kind of play. There was one called Wildwood Down which is made by a pair of brothers and the main character is based on their childhood friend who has down syndrome and he's also mm. like written and done a lot of the voice acting himself and it's this point and click adventure where he is kind of trying to solve a, a mystery like a crime i believe it's a murder um but they showed me the opening movie that is like a live action thing that he's in and it was just really That's funny cute. and i really i really want to play more of that one um there was other stuff uh like thank goodness you're here was there which is that british game that i think i've talked about before yeah you told me about that one yeah. um and then i just have like a big list there was one called like dark web stalker or something oh yeah i've seen that one that looks that's sick looked really sick it was looks cool um it's like a horror game or what yeah yeah it's yeah. like it meant like it's like you're a streamer but like the idea of streaming itself is kind of fucked up when you think about it it's like parasocial relationships mm -hmm. and it's like you're really just like the, this really dials that up because it's like you're basically s yeah. sacrificing your like your blood to stream you know what i mean yeah. like which is kind of, in a way, sort of true. there's, like you're there's some your uh, life thinly essence. veiled metaphors going totally on you know what i mean and so this one is like a horror game where you know basically a streamer starts having fucked up things happen to them during their stream mm -hmm. and like whatever it's it's very cool it's worth checking out for yeah. sure for is sure. it already out no, no i think no, there's a the demo out or yeah. it was it yeah, at yeah. next fest um there was uh, Death of a Wish was there. That game just came out. Kind of um, Soulsy-esque combat, but like a really messed up, like scribbly art style that I really liked. Oh, I think I saw that one. Yeah. yeah so this, oh, is yeah. All, this is all just Day of the Devs. Um, and then in terms of actual proper appointments at GDC and PAX, didn't really have any. I saw Dune Awakening behind closed doors. Oh, tell me. Did you actually see gameplay? Yes. But okay. Does it look like Conan Exiles or not? I haven't played Conan Exiles, so I can't tell you. <laughs> have you seen some gameplay? No. Okay, right. Does um, it look like third person people walking around in big sand dunes? That's a dumb question. Of course it yeah, is. Yeah, well, you're talking about that. <laughs> so therefore, it looks like it looks like Conan Exiles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, All right, shut the fuck up. Okay, I, I called it. Was I said it was dumb as soon as I said it. All right, I don't need you to remind me. Well, there's no there's no penis slider in this one, unfortunately. That is a real disappointment to be honest um, with you. I really expect that from Funcom at this point. So I would. I, yeah kind of looks a little bit like this but not really uh did it look good were you impressed i by was it? i was um i'm not an mmo person or a survival game person i was really into what i saw but uh, huh. it was because it was at the very beginning like you get quizzed by a reverend mother and like they cool. just nailed that tone and everything immediately and it doesn't seem like the opening at least is too overwhelming i was like they were kind of going through the loop of getting materials and crafting you know a basic basic weaponry and then you get a still sure. suit and then you get a like a better one and then you're getting to a stage where you're building huge outposts or like your own base and then you're working with friends and then you're in an ornithopter and you're doing that cool dive thing oh yeah can't ride a sandworm at launch though unfortunately that comes later does it Interesting. well apparently they're working on it so to be fair i don't see how you could ever ride a sandworm in a game mm -hmm. in a way that that actually works mm -hmm. in an mmo i mean i just can't see that yeah. this is I, that would that would not make sense yeah. but, but good luck to them if they can do it if it's just going to be some lame fast travel thing i'm like don't bother please yeah. that's yeah. gonna be too annoying to see but it looked, um, i mean it looked cool i was i was into it but like obviously it's hands off so i can't really get the, the sure. full impression like i don't know how shooting feels and because they're typically you know whatever melee yeah. melee guys but um Everything I saw, I was, I was into. Fun Funcom. Com. For the people who made Conan Exile. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, have, mm -hmm. they have experience in desert-based survival games. <laughs> this is kind of their <laughs> niche. No one would be better equipped to do this than them. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, and then the only um, other big thing that I saw really was the... Um, I saw Convey AI and I saw NVIDIA's oh, yeah. thing. 
I also saw you. I, I saw Ubisoft's one. Yeah. Is it good? Is it shit? What's what's up? Not as impressive as Nvidia's. Yeah. Um, okay. So the, the Nvidia one was actually good. It was impressive. Okay. It's not the thing. So to give a little context of what it was that it, we saw and played, it was um, characters were basically given like a little background. They had uh, various things on it, so like they couldn't. Uh, what was it like character this character smokes or this character drinks or this character is religious and like i'll have all these guardrails and um and then you would just talk to it but like you would actually use a microphone to talk to the character yeah i saw that and yeah. so it was actually really cool i, I mean because obviously the demo there was like basic tutorialization that was kind of not mm. there and so i really wonder how that would be implemented in a broader game like because with games there is such a there's a specific language and a logic to get things from characters. And so in this mm. in this scenario, in a hotel lobby, you're trying to get a certain hotel number so you can get uh, in the room and steal some documents, right? And so there are various way, ways you could do it. You could talk to the bellhop, you could talk to the person on the main desk. You could talk to this guy's like partner who is at a conference. And because it's kind of so open, mm. there was definitely moments where you're just like, wait, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? But mm -hmm. When you're actually talking to them, I was really impressed because I had seen some AI that had not been as reactive. Like, they definitely responded appropriately. Sure. I would I would say stupid things like, are you single? You know, what's going on? And they would like, <laughs> fit, they would reply. Did you try to date the AI, Lucy? Is that the first thing that you did when you encountered AI? You asked it out. Is that what happened? Oh, you're like, I mean, hey, you like sand? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some sand? No, I, um, I did try. So when I did the convey one, I was... That one was like, I will say wonkier. That's the Ubisoft one, Convey. No, no, this is a different oh, company altogether. It's a different one, okay. Um, right. That was the one where I was like, does this unit have a soul shit? Like, are you okay. single? What's going on? And okay, it was, yeah. the guardrails in that one were so tight. And also it just looked really wonky. It like, didn't work. Right. Um, the NVIDIA one though, it was cool. Cause you could kind of talk to this guy and you could convince him of things. As long as you were convincing enough, it would kind of believe you. And I will say the the I'm this is on me, I didn't ask, but the the voice work in it, like the, there was definitely way more emotion in it. Right. Because the convey one mm. was just monotone. Microsoft sure. Sam ass. This one actually right. had um there was a guy and he was like, he was really tired. So if you kind of prodded at him about that, he'd be like, Yeah, I do want to go have a break, man. Like, yeah, I do want to go get mm. a drink. So it was cool, and it was like this kind of immersive sim in a way conversation but like it definitely was missing the hand of a designer guiding you to an experience yeah. and i really wonder what that would be like and also the fact that when you're playing a game i just want to sit and veg out on the couch i don't want to be um hi excuse me uh <laughs> Ms., Ms. character like can you please yeah. you know i i don't necessarily want to want to do it's that a but lot I, of effort yeah yeah it was it was yeah. impressive is the word i will use i don't i I'm intrigued to see what's next. It's not going to be implemented, I don't think, anytime soon, unless it's going to be in some mad, you know, not implemented very well way. The the Ubisoft one, though, was... That was the one that I asked if he was a child of divorce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and what did he reply? He said, no, my parents are still together, but my ex-wife and son are out of the picture. Oh, oh, so, that's really that's like really way more bleak that's way more bleak yeah jesus uh that one was kind of it was more gameplay oriented so first of all you <laughs> he was oh god he kept talking about like this epic team up that we were doing to fight in the resistance against the mega oh, corporation sounds very ubisoft right there and it was yeah. and there was this first mission where you had to um you had to get to know him on a certain level. And that's why I asked that question because you had to get to know him in a very gamified way where it was like, learn about, ask questions about his background, ask questions about the mega corpse, ask questions about the mission. And so we had this conversation and that was fine, but it was very weird and God really, I think. Um, and also some of the things he would say, we just, a human being would never say, like it just felt strange. Then the next mission was you were looking at um, drone footage and you were supposed to be asking the character what I was looking at. So it was like, why is the drone going up here or doing this or doing that? Mm. And oh, what happens if the drone gets caught? And I'm like, okay, 
yeah. And then the third one was basically being presented with a map of a building that you were infiltrating and you again had to convince the AI character uh, how to infiltrate this building. So should we repel in with a grapple or should we just break down the window? How do we get rid of the security cameras? And then you would basically, based on what was in the room, give your plan to infiltrate this building. And it was kind of, it was pretty cool. You did get that satisfaction when she'd be like, no, you know, I don't think that's right. And then you'd argue and she'd go, actually, yeah, you are right. And I was like, oh, thank you for the validation. <laughs> it, it, I think everything just felt a bit clunky. Like nothing felt natural. Nothing felt like, oh, this is how I want to play a Splinter like, Cell game or something. You yeah, know? it's a at, ways at a out. Core, yeah. At a core premise perspective, I'm so not interested in this. Yeah. Because like, you're actually asking me to argue with a computer yeah. <laughs> and convince it of things. <laughs> I swear to God, it's like, it just reminds me of being on a fucking telephone call with the bank and then just being like, operator, please. <laughs> Oper <laughs> like, I just want you to, I don't want to fucking talk to yeah. you. I just want the options list. That you, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just, that does not interest me. The idea of, oh, I get to talk to the computer and it has a fake made up personality conjured out of nothing. Mm. And, I understand how that might be interesting if you could pair it with some very specific guardrails that are spun up by a developer. Like imagine mm. like Lucas Pope with a with a detective game that he's making and he's got a very clear goal in mind for each of his characters, but built within that is a little bit of color that can come through from the from from AI stuff. That's kind of interesting, I guess. Yeah. But only to add like a little bit of spice on top of what an actual writer and designer has done. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hand over full agency of that interaction to no. the fucking computer. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, that yeah. does not sound interesting. Because I also would just feel kind of dumb. Like yeah. just talking to the computer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I really would. I mean, so, that's the thing where it's like, it, not you get into the weird space of replica, that AI girlfriend thing as well. And, you know, there's also ethical concerns about actors and sure. writers all stuff, and all that kind all of stuff. Of the thing that I think is cool, and actually JK was watching your... Um, uh, your NPCs video where it's like when you get to the end of a conversation tree with an NPC, right? And it's just like, oh, see you later. Oh, <laughs> see you later. I'm working on this. See you later. Like if maybe instead of having a writer dedicated to writing box and numerous kind of lines like that, yeah. like utilizing the AI uh, to kind of generate something, that but like, could be cool, I, but, but also just like... Who cares though? Like yeah. again, at the, at the end of the bar, the end of the line of dialogue, I'm like, oh, well, They've sent so, me yeah. away. Okay, that's fine. We've yeah. done our thing. In like, some ways, it's kind of nice because you know, like, okay, yeah, that's, that's the end of that mm. one. And I, mean, yeah. I think that it's like you were saying that games have certain logic or expectations that you just learn mm. after playing so many because, like, my mom or dad who never play video games, when they see something or, like, my nephew, it's like the questions they ask I find so interesting because they, they don't have that logic ingrained in them. So, like... Yeah. All he knows is Minecraft and Roblox. He boots up Red Dead and is watching me play it. And he's like, oh, go chop that tree down. And it's like, this ain't that type of game, yeah. buddy. You can't yeah, just walk yeah, yeah. up and do it, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, the... Well, that's stuff like gaming, like, what's X game like for non-gamers? Oh, the, for, for non -gamers, um... For from Rasputin. Rasputin. I, Rasputin. Yeah, I like yeah, those yeah. videos a lot. Interesting series. Yeah, for sure. The, um, the one thing that I did see Convey was used in that was... Um, really useful but also nvidia has one that they just launched i think it's already available where it's basically like you dump in loads of documentation and then you just ask it you know oh what is the sword i've seen that one yeah, yeah that's right so yeah, that was really cool and like the way that it was used the convey one not the nvidia one was used in second life was basically like it's as this onboarding tool and so you kind of get there you talk to a character and you go hey how do i do this or where do i go from here and i guess that's hmm. and also you know they're not voiced characters it's just pulling from all the files that it has on what the game is no but in terms of the actual game game characters yeah it's not going to be you're not getting an astarian from any of those you're, you're not, not you know yeah you are not 
I mean, yeah. Like I'm maybe not letting 20... any AI bite me in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> That's for damn sure. And I mean, like, I'm not naive enough to think that 20 years from now, we might not, you might not have an Astarian, right? Like, because I mean, this technology is advancing so quickly. Did you guys see the Marquez Brownlee video where he's like, you know, Will Smith eating spaghetti like one year ago versus now? Oh, Did you guys no, see that I haven't one? seen that yet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, because like the like the Sora is it Sora like the video Sora? technology? Yeah, um, Sora. Where it's like a, <laughs> every that time was, I'm gonna that say was surprisingly it. good. That yeah, was surprisingly was good. good. <laughs> but like that, how fast AI technology is advancing? Mm. Who knows what it's going to be yeah. like in five years, ten years, twenty years, whatever. Like maybe we get to that point, but it's just even then, I still think there's a thing that happens when you know that a human did a thing yeah. that you're interfacing with versus a computer, you know, it's like yeah. you're, you're interfacing with someone's content uh, intent. Like mm. the middleman is the piece of software. Sure. But the other side of that software is a human who had a goal in mind that they're leading you towards mm. in whatever it is. And I don't want to give that up. And yeah. again, I can see a place for AI peppering, sprinkling, seasoning, like whatever. Sure. But the minute we hand over wholesale to that thing, I think that's yeah. that's too far for me personally. But I think that's, I don't know. you know. Who knows how that goes in like 10 years or whatever. Judgment right. Day will yeah. have been, been and gone by then. Judgment Day, that's right. Uh, yeah. Ralph, what have um, you been playing? So I've been playing Dragon's Dogma. Ooh, I only oh, played a, I only played I a little bit. I keep forgetting about this game. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, I was very interested. Yeah. Yeah. Have you played it yet, Luce? I played a couple hours, but okay. I... Um, I, I just got back from PAX and I was very tired okay. and I just was sure. not in the place for a very systems driven game at that point. Well, it actually isn't quite system driven. It's quite well, a fascinating game. Well, that's so, it. As in, as in like, it just, it was throwing tutorials at me and I was like, I don't need, I don't want to read. At the beginning, I yes, don't it read. is. For sure. For sure. So no, I watched, I watched Shogun true. instead and read subtitles. I'm watching Shogun. Oh, no, it's so that. fucking good. That's good. Anyway. Um, I'm going to watch Shogun. I think, uh, yeah, also you haven't played either, Jack. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on it, like after, you know, Elden mm -hmm. Ring and whatever else. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of parallels between these two games. I'm only 20 hours in, but I've taken my time and mm -hmm. I've only just hit like the second town, major capital town, I should say, capital city. Um, really fascinating game to to talk about. And I am still too early to be able to come to like any conclusions mm -hmm. or whatever. But I really got the sense as I listened to all the discourse that like this game is all about friction and it doesn't give a fuck about you. And it's like so hard to play and everything is difficult. Mm -hmm. And like the save feature will purposefully screw you over and mm -hmm. everything's... And I'm like, okay, cool. I was ready for that. And I'm like, that's not what this experience is. 20 hours in, I found it quite pleasant to play actually. Ooh. And not that it's like full of handholds because it's not, mm -hmm. but neither, but it's definitely not so brutal and so unforgiving and so unassisting that it feels like this wholly different experience and I, i'm quite surprised at how the discourse that i've seen around it right because so that's one thing right mm -hmm. all of that but at the same time i would also say it feels like so far a almost like a prototype or an alpha build for another game that eventually will come later and it's so hard to explain that without having played it yourself, but it's so free form and loose in its overall composition that it really feels like it's waiting for something else to mm. pop in over the top of it mm. to make it all hang together. Okay. Like, for example, like going around town, you... Um, you, you're able to go into all of these places that you're probably not meant to be in. And I, like I'm in one place right now called like the Forbidden Laboratory. And it's clear that it's like, I'm not really meant to be there. There's lots of people in masks. They're all doing secret business. It's built up as this place where I'm like, not meant to be, I'm not meant to be there, mm -hmm. but I can just walk around there. No one gives a fuck. And furthermore, anywhere you go, anywhere in the world, you can just steal shit out of people's shops and no one cares. You know what huh. I mean? It's like you can literally steal the, the gold that's sitting behind them on their cash register and they don't register it, right? And so that's kind of what I mean when I say that this game, like it feels as though the system that recognizes that you are stealing shit comes in later. You know what I mean? And then that makes the, the, the city life stuff come together and that makes the stealth stuff come together. And, you know, outside in the open world, really limited enemy variety and i know that that mm. doesn't change a whole lot later on but again it really feels like you've got a prototype group of enemies in place and then the rest of them come in later similarly you've got this quest that you're going on which is 
pretty okay. It's nothing incredible. Most of the quests are kind of just like fetch questy or go and kill a thing. It does feel as though there's another layer that might sit over the top of that as some really grand quest with more interesting milestones and boss encounters. Maybe those boss encounters come later. Right now, there's been none of them actually in 20 hours. So... Well, you haven't played a single boss fight in 20 hours. No, I haven't had done a single boss mm. fight. No, but there, there have been like bigger enemies on the yeah. map, like because there's like a Cyclops and a Minotaur mm. and a Griffin or whatever, and they're big enemies and they have big health bars, or whatever. But I wouldn't call them bosses per se because mm. none of them are involved in the story, right? They're right. just random creatures wandering around that I can kill, and there are multiple of them as well. There are multiple Cyclops and whatever. So, like having said all of that, I really love it. I do. Mm. Like, I'm 20 hours in, and I'm just like, yeah, let's just keep rolling with this. Let's just keep going and exploring and finding random caves and figuring shit out and whatever. I like it, but I definitely don't love it. And I'm, and, but, but I think that if you took this game, all of its components, and then made a sequel to it, to just fix, not fix, fix is not the right word, but if you just like added to all of those components, you would have an incredible video game at that mm. point because its sandbox is so unique and interesting and cool, but it does feel like a bit of an alpha. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. How does it the run? Combat is, I know that the performance yeah. has been a, a sticking point well, look, for a lot of people. I'm not the I'm not the right person to ask because I do play it on a 4090, right? So mm. I'm just throwing a lot of silicon at it, <laughs> and it runs fine. Mm. You know, it's not great, but I but I do know for anyone with lower end PC, it runs like ass. Same with consoles. I'm not sure if that's been patched to be improved lately. Mm. For me, it's been fine, and I actually have no complaints. But that's with a stupidly overpowered GPU, and that's yeah. Not I mean, what 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 resolution? What frame rate? What are you rocking? I'm paying like 4K, and I'm like able to get you know 60 to 100 frames depending on what's Damn. going on. You know, so yeah, that's fine for me. But it does fluctuate. I do get some like some drops and whatever. That's yeah, uh, definitely not an issue for me, but obviously an issue for many other people. But um. <laughs> Was it really running interesting? on the deck anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Your deck will just like melt straight away. So, yeah. so if you say that there is a missing feeling of an yeah. a, an overarching story that's pulling you through, you haven't really had boss encounters that you're leading, are you satisfied with exploration? Yep. Absolutely, for mm -hmm. sure. But but even then, it's a very basic form. I don't want to make it seem as though you're going to find incredible things that you never thought possible. Like the exploration is really just like, oh, hey, here's another cave. Cool, sick. All right, I'll, there's the same enemies that I fought 30 times before. Let's kill them again. Oh, cool. I got a turnip at the end of it. That's not <laughs> even a joke. Sometimes you'll clear out a cave and you'll get like a potato, right? It's kind of like Elden Ring is that it's like, I fought this before and this item was not worth it. Yes, but Elden Ring has those, again, the design of the world of like the lands between is unbelievable, like unbelievable. And just visually, when you arrive at a new location, it's crazy. And yeah, the dungeons true. that you're going through are nuts and so intricate and they're unique. And, and the boss encounters, all of them, all like 150 of them, however many there are, they're all fantastic, right? All of those things are there and i don't think anyone would be able to say that elden ring feels like a bit of a prototype mm. but yeah but this definitely does and that is not to say that i don't enjoy it because there is something so good about a game that just lets you roll around with your homies and just have a, a fun adventure because you you have these pawns with you like three npc characters uh, and they just roll around with you and they chat and they have like these barks that they repeat over and over again mm. but it's charming and you're like that's okay um, who did you make but did you make anyone i didn't make anyone to be honest with you i just made a little mate. hunched over mage man he kind of <laughs> looks like the sheriff of a uh, um the sheriff of nottingham from what was his name Ugh, can't believe he's, he's alan rickman <laughs> alan rickman he kind of looks like alan rickman yes um, the character creator does look amazing he's yeah. wild and and the, and the cool thing is you'll walk around and you'll be in the world and you'll be like oh there's kratos because what <laughs> yeah. happens is people create kratos and then their pawns get populated into your world and so oh. that's it I yeah. made, so that's like a cool feature right? i made Blythe. i hope that he's okay. doing some good work for me and in fact, my friend messaged me the other day. He's like, your pawn is serving me well in my game. And this guy I haven't spoken to in like a few years, but he messaged me being like, thanks for the pawn, man. Do, like, you, yes, do you get anything from that? Like if you, so you create a character, your pawn is sent to another world. Is it yes. like Dark Souls or whatever, where it's like, oh, someone upvotes your message and you get 
Estus or whatever s- the hell it, yeah, it did. You can set a quest for your pawn when they go and help someone else. And so the person who then gets your pawn sees, okay, I have a quest to kill a Cyclops. And I might have set a reward of like 10,000 gold to go and kill the Cyclops. And so I'm like, all right, well, I'll go and find a Cyclops then, kill it with this pawn. And then when they leave, then, you know, the person will get, you know, I'll get 10,000 gold and their pawn will get more experience or whatever. Cool system, as mm-hmm. I describe it, by the way. But mm-hmm. manifestly, how it actually impacts you in gameplay is not as impressive because most of the time the rewards are not particularly compelling mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. quite an unclear system. So this is what I'm talking about. Like there's all these cool things that exist that I like, but it's but it's like take this and make a sequel that just adds on top of all of it and it's going to be a 10 out of 10 game. Yeah. But right now, if I don't do scores, but I feel like if I was to score this, I feel like this is like a 7.5 or an 8 to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Things that I really enjoy about it that I really like, I'm definitely keen to play more. But I'm noticing it's un it's missing components a lot. Um, but that's not taking away from how cool it is just to play and, and roll through it. So I really recommend checking it out. Very unique, mm. but specifically very different to, I think, the popular discourse around it. I don't think the discourse is accurate at all. I really don't. I think I think people have greatly exaggerated the degree to which this game gives you that that friction or or what have you that people have spoken about. Mm. So mm-hmm yeah mm. so it's cool it's it's really interesting and no, that, I've been playing... i, I want to check Go it on, out sorry. it seems yeah. like there's enough interesting things to that sound like they're up my alley of things that i like that i'm like i feel like it's worth checking out yeah definitely and i and i because i and i think it's also interesting because of as i said how much it's missing but yeah like there's a lot to be talked about in terms of those missing components but they don't and that's not true some people have really really hate this game you know a lot of people are like i played this for 20 hours it's fucking boring and the, you know that review that steam rating that you're seeing isn't just about performance it's also a lot of people who just think it's a straight up shit game and i don't agree mm-hmm. with that i think it's a good game but i think those missing components definitely can stack up and can be and you can reach the point where you're like no nah, i'm just not into this you yeah. know um but yeah other than that i play Bellatro, a lot yeah. of Bellatro. I need to try it got that me good, too. man. Oh, it so got happy. me good. I'm so it's, happy. Um, <laughs> I'm so happy. It's fantastic. It's it's so smart. It's <sighs> like as soon as you as soon as you understand it, it takes a little while. Like maybe I'm gonna say twenty to thirty minutes, right? Not that long. Yeah. But once you're in the way that it starts to build and the momentum that you get and how creative you start to be about things, it's so good, man. It's just it's just pure distilled game design genius. Where it's like, how did you come up with this? Why isn't anyone? It's always that thing where it's where you encounter something and you're like, how has no one else come up with this before? Mm-hmm. Those are the things that you know have really hit right, and it's exactly that. You know, it really is fantastic. So, have you done the thing? Steam Deck game. It is. Sorry. Have you done the thing where you've had an amazing hand and you accidentally hit discard? God, it's so <laughs> annoying. It really should give you a prompt yes! where it's like, listen, that hand that you've got is really good. Are you sure you want to discard this one? Because uh, I've done that way too many times yep. and it's ended my runs, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, but no, it's it's really, really fantastic mm-hmm. and can't recommend it enough. It's like 10 bucks or whatever. Yep. Super yeah, cheap. I think it's I need like 10 bucks. It. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and also they're doing a mobile port and it really belongs on mobile oh. like, because you could play this with one hand and it will be fine mm-hmm. and man it would it would it would go off like uh, yeah it would take over when it's on when it's on mobile yeah. i'm, I'm sure, sure there's like will. lots of clones already yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um so that's what i've been playing yeah. i've been having a really good week and i also very soon plan to start playing a little bit of hell divers you haven't oh, touched Helldivers, have you Liz? i still haven't tried it yeah it's yeah. fine of course it's of course really it's fun, fun. everyone it loves fun. it yeah. yeah and um it's just haven't had time you yeah. know but i really really want to um I wish so I had more time to keep up next. with like the ins and outs of is it Joel, the the game master, the game master dude <laughs> who's like who's, who decrees you are no longer allowed to have sex. Yeah, sex is now banned because <laughs> on our this? last mission, did you hear about this? Yeah, there's uh, like because like okay, Helldivers is one of the most. Uh, this is why I'm actually really disappointed that I'm missing out on Helldivers. Mm-hmm. Okay, because yes, it's a fun game, but what's actually way more interesting about it is the way that it's handling its live service stuff because. The way it drops in new mate- new like kit, new weapons, new mechs or whatever, is that it weaves it into the storyline. Like you're going to the mech planet to free the mech, uh, you know, the mech factories. And then all of a sudden mechs will just start randomly appearing in people's missions without any kind of like 
you know, prelude or whatever. They're just there. And that's cool. But also there's this kind of meta narrative over the top of like, they're sending you to assault X, Y, and Z planet. And if you're unsuccessful, then you fall back on this galaxy map and you now have to defend different territory because the war effort was not successful. And then they have these kind of law things attached to it where, you know, high command decrees that because they failed their last mission, sex is now banned amongst <laughs> hell divers. You know what I mean? They're like, and it's like, it's just nonsense, of course, but it's cool nonsense. And I'm really disappointed that I'm not in that game right now. I know you're making me want to get that. it tonight. Do you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. of course it feels like what else, what other game is doing that right now? Like mm. none, you know? And that's one of the many reasons it's been so successful. So yeah, I'm very keen to check that out. Yeah. Mm. Well, what a packed episode. Thank you so much for joining us. This was Thanks for having me. Episode. It's been great. It's been very, very Wait, wait, fun. we haven't done Wait, oh, oh, oh we doing, are we doing show and tell? We'd have to do our show okay, and tell. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh all right. This is this is non gaming. Non gaming. Something you want to bring to the enjoyed. table. Just something something that you've enjoyed, something you're thinking about, something you've mm-hmm. played or not played, so you've watched or listened to or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can go first. Go for it. Have you guys checked out X Men ninety seven? Oh, not yet. I'm gonna no, download it for my flight. It's good. It is so exceptionally good. I was blown away. I actually got sent a screener mm-hmm. from Disney before it aired, Ooh. and I was like, I was like, oh, I don't know about this. I love mine and the nostalgia like thing. I don't know. And then I watched it. And by the end, I was like clapping when the credits were <laughs> rolled. I was like, holy shit, absolutely crushed it. Like the degree to which they perfectly nailed the tone mm. is flawless. And also the fact that they made Cyclops cool. <gasps> and it's the very first piece of media that I've ever seen that makes Cyclops cool, as opposed to just being this wet blanket <laughs> who's like in the way of Wolverine, you know? Damn. Um, it legitimately is just really well written and cool and just interesting stuff. Like mm. I, I really recommend checking it out. It's not just a, obviously it's a silly kids cartoon, but it's mm. so well done that I really think that you're going to be surprised by how well, by how much you enjoyed, I think. Even if you haven't watched the original, go yeah. and watch the original, by the way, if yeah. you haven't. So, yeah, man, X-Men 97, Ooh. going hard. Hell yeah. That's me. All right. Uh, I went to see Health and also okay. Daddy Freya. I've been, I've been to two gigs in two weeks. That is unlike wow. me. Um, Imagine going outside. Went outside. It was great. Whoa. Um, yeah. No, Daddy Freya was on Eurovision a couple of years ago, and I've seen him before, and he's like Icelandic pop. It's just really fun. Nice. To, um, and then Health were great. Um, I saw Pixel Grip were opening for them. I missed the other two uh, openers, but Pixel Grip were amazing. And then Health, they did, they did the Cyberpunk song, so everyone was everyone was nice. Thrilled. But I wish they had done Tears nice. from Max Payne. Yeah, that would have been sick. But just the whole ambient soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was really great. It was a great everyone show. Vibing. Great show. <laughs> cool. Um, and other than that, I mean, Shogun is still the thing that I'm, I'm watching. Have you seen this week's yeah. episode? No, I'm actually only up to episode one, but I watched it. And I'm like, this is fantastic. So I gotta watch this show. It's yeah, pretty good. Shogun. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's um, all over. It. <laughs> it's, everyone's all over it. It's one of those ones where something happens in this episode. I'm obviously not going to spoil it, but I I had like a oh moment, which I haven't had maybe since Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's I'm cool. damn. Yeah. What about you? I uh. I watched of recent things I've watched. I watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith series. How the, the is new that? one? I feel mixed. I feel mm. positive enough where I'm really happy I watched it, and I would definitely recommend it if it, nothing else that it's really interesting to talk about. Mm. But I definitely have feelings about it. It's kind of hard to talk about without spoiling. But I definitely it's gorgeous. Like there's moments that like surprised me of you know like you said that you're like oh but in the way of that like it made me laugh really hard where i didn't expect it it had a lot of moments like that um visually it's gorgeous all the clothes beautiful um, it sounds like it sounds like suits <laughs> <laughs> people well, just watch suits because it looks thing, nice to watch the other thing i recently watched was uh this season of the bachelor which was Oh, oh awful. Nice. <laughs> Bachelor, man. I used to watch that every year. I love that shit. The Bachelor rules. Yeah. Well, I've I, never seen I, The Bachelor, but there's a show called From Couple to Thruple that I started watching. And oh, boy. <laughs> see, I love the trashy TV, but man, Bachelor like pushes me to my limit. Same with like Love is Blind. Like I love the trash, but then as you're watching it, you're like, this is kind of a fucked up social experiment. I oh, feel yeah. bad for watching this. Like, 
when he's like going on fantasy suite dates with three different women back to back to back thinking about maybe getting married to them basically Ooh. like he's having sex with all of them and then he's like okay i'm gonna marry these two okay i'm gonna marry this one and it's like <laughs> it's insane if you Shit, think about man. it too much it's definitely yeah it's, it's dystopian but yeah. i love it yeah <laughs> i yeah, love i love trash tv me I too really, i really do i just need to turn my brain off sometimes and just i've also been re-watching gossip girl <laughs> xoxo <laughs> like, <laughs> The OG, not the fucking reboot, whatever <laughs> oh the hell they're doing, but it's just of like comfort trash in the background. Mm -hmm. Gossip Girl has been, has yes. been playing. TikTok, Spotted. TikTok thinks that Little I really want to rewatch Gilmore Girls, mm. and I'm like, sure. first of all, it's not autumn, so I can't. That is an <laughs> autumn show. Okay, but also I was looking, and it's just like they don't make TV like that anymore, where it's 24 episodes in a season in a season how gossip so wild, girl is like, it's like what the fuck is and they're yeah. all 40 minutes long it's yeah. like what the uh, hell yeah it's um, insane how they used to do it right oh, it's crazy now Crank we're like eight out. episodes and we're like oh that's good that's a long season yeah <laughs> that, that's the british yeah. model man <laughs> like yeah. our season's so short sure like yeah. doctor who is like three episodes a season or whatever <laughs> lovely, lovely. Um, yep all right now actually is this the end of the show or does anyone have anything else to bring up Speak now for everyone much peace. I think that's it. Thank, yeah. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. And uh, thank you all at home. If you have been watching or listening, um, if you wrote in with a user question, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love on the Judas episode too. I can't remember yes. if I said that up top, but that was a big deal for us. And we're really glad it went down well. So yeah, That's yeah. awesome. Very happy. Yeah. And thanks for, yeah, the questions were really great. We mm -hmm. hope you answered enough, uh, Jakey. Thank you so much for being mm -hmm. here, man. It was really awesome chatting with you. Yeah. And, Thank you for uh, having me. You guys yeah, are great. Dude, I do definitely going to be like staying on top of all your exploits, mm -hmm. all the shit you got cooking, and um, hopefully we'll have you back sometime in the future. Yeah. Do it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be here. Awesome. <laughs> right awesome. here. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Wait, we don't have Jake cool, to, to take us home and say tie your shoes and go to bed. We have another Jake, Jake. that's construed this mm -hmm. right. You want to do it, Can man? Do the, do the line, do the line. Replace what? Jake fully. Just replace says, him wholesale. That's it. Tie your shoes and go to bed. Yeah, that's what he said. Nailed it. He that's it. He that's does. perfect. Does that sound like him or is he like, tie your You got to do barrel the camera. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Barrel, barrel the camera and do it. Let's go. Tie your shoes and go to bed. <laughs> we'll see you next time.